It's a battle of Bulldogs here in Ruston, Louisiana at Joe IA Stadium. The Mississippi State Bulldogs start off this march from inside their own 10-yard line and a slant to Brandon McRae from Wesley Carroll after a couple of impressive Anthony Dixon runs. Gets them out to the 41, Bob Wischusen. And Brock Heward with you in Ruston, Louisiana Tech, under the guidance of Derek Dooley, trying to turn this program around in much the same way that Sylvester Croon turned around the Mississippi State Bulldogs. The SEC Coach of the Year last season has a fight on his hands early in the first quarter. And it's back to the ground in Dixon, and he knifes forward for about three. And that's the smash mouth football you expect to see from Mississippi State. That's exactly what Derek said this week. It's going to be a tough week. We've got to match their toughness. Sylvester, Sylvester Kroom, an ex-center for Bear Bryant, knows something about the line of scrimmage, likes to take the air out of the football. You're going to see a fair amount of that tonight. The biggest news, though, for Mississippi State and Sylvester Kroom is who they don't have on their offensive line. That's exactly right. Derek Sherrod, the left tackle, will not be here, did not make the trip. They've been moving people all around. It's going to be difficult continuity-wise for Mississippi State tonight. Two brand-new starters on the offensive line. Moving forward and spinning for a first down is the quarterback, Wesley Carroll, on a keeper. Without Derek Sherrod here, the Mississippi State Bulldogs have some impact players they need to be able to count on, and Anthony Dixon might be the first. 450 carries over his last two years. He takes that air out of the football. Wesley Carroll, the quarterback, started a lot of football games as a true freshman last year. Expect to see not very many mistakes out of Carroll. And Jamal Smith, we saw him on a punt return earlier. You will see him. He is their big playmaker, not necessarily on early downs, but a guy that can get down the field. Dixon is the eye back, instead Carroll, play action, rolling, firing near side on a comeback where he finds Brandon McRae for another Mississippi State first down. And that's a tough matchup out there for Stevon Howes, you see the number 27 in the corner for Louisiana Tech, Wesley Carroll, a nice job of getting outside the pocket, just too much time there, Brandon McRae, a very tall receiver, 6'3", six 6'4", foot six foot runs a nice route here, turning his numbers back to the quarterback. That's an easy, easy completion for a quarterback when you have that much green space. And Mississippi State doing a nice job of moving the chains, getting some momentum they didn't get in that first drive. Aubrey Bell, the only wide receiver, gets loose on the edge. Down the sideline. Tripped up inside the 20. Out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Stephen Stevon House that time made another stop that saved the touchdown. Unlike Louisiana Tech, where you're going to see a lot of youth at the receiver position, Mississippi State, a very veteran group. Seniors, juniors, seniors. Audrey Bell, a senior here, a fourth-year senior, who has really come in his own. Sylvester Croom, very excited about the training camp that he has had. Feels like with a lot of players, they hit their senior year, they realize the finality that's coming, and they seem to step their game up. Audrey Bella has had a great camp, and there capitalizes again on a matchup with a smaller Stevon House. To the ground and Dixon. He has popped, and a helmet comes flying out of the pile at about the eight-yard line. Again, House came up to help on the stop along with Nolan Darby. Down in this area of the field, Brock, sometimes you as a quarterback would know, you look for the lob if you can get it, and that might be an effective strategy for Mississippi State. Yeah, two great targets for Mississippi State. You see that a lot, especially in college football. You see that disparity. It seems to arise a little bit more, and tonight you've already seen it in a couple plays. Very big physical receivers from Mississippi State. That's Brandon McRae at 6'4 in motion over the middle. Wow! What a drive from Mississippi State. It began at their own six-yard line. And that's a busted cover, there, Bob. You can't be that open when that field condenses and shrinks in the red zone and someone is that open. You know that's a mental error. That's the other thing that Derek Dooley really wanted to not see tonight were very many mental errors. A key mental error there on second down. Too easy a completion there for Mississippi State. Carlson's point after is good. One group of Bulldogs is on the board. It's Mississippi State out of the SEC coming to WAC country here at Louisiana Tech. Wesley Carroll finds a wide open Brandon McRae for the game's first points. It's 7-0.
7-0 Mississippi State over Louisiana Tech. College football primetime here from Ruston, Louisiana. And it was a nine-play, 94-yard scoring drive capped by that man, Brandon McRae. A short touchdown pass from Wesley Carroll. Carroll was perfect on the drive. And Louisiana Tech finds themselves at home in an early hole, but there have been some less than likely teams that have won some games earlier today in college football. It's already been an eventful week one. Here's Philip Livas. Out across the 30 to about the 31 yard line. Back to the touchdown. And we talked about motion there, and oftentimes motion can confuse defenders. Just a simple motion here. Watch Nolan Darby and Stevon Howes. Darby is in there replacing Jackson. The motion comes, and that affects. Howes is trying to point to the linebacker. There you see Darby cheats up, leaves the middle of the field too open, too much miscommunication. That's what you're going to see. You're going to see with new people on the field, and I think more, than, more often than not, you're going to see those mental errors in the first football game of the year. Can't have them if you're Louisiana Tech, though, if you're going to stay in this football game. Not against an SEC opponent, especially when it's physical up front. As Mississippi State, Taylor Bennett on a keeper, a nice fake, and that allows him to get to the edge, and he scoots out of bounds at the 37-yard line, a gain of six yards. Shane Womack helped pave the way and let's take a look at those impact players led by Taylor Bennett from Tech. And Taylor Bennett a kid that's talented with his arm that's what you heard from all the law tech coaches not necessarily his legs but there's some confusion some disguise a nice job to get a first down game Patrick Jackson he's the guy that has the legs a great career rusher here been here a long time 2,000 yards and we've already seen Philip Livas haven't we big playmaker on the outside and special teams. <laughs> for a first down. He made two first downs happen on third and ten receptions on the first drive of the game for Louisiana Tech. And he picks up another first down here, a gain of 12. And back to the studio right now, an update from Wendy Nix. Well, Bob, it is a final in Ann Arbor. The Rich Rodriguez era has begun and begun with a loss. Final play of the game, one last shot to catch the youth Stephen Three to Michael Shaw to no avail. 25-23, the final in Ann Arbor. Wendy here in Ruston, an incompletion from Taylor Bennett to Josh Wheeler. So Rich Rodriguez begins his year with the loss at home to Utah, and he can maybe get on the phone with Frank Beamer. Say, Frank, how do you feel? It's not too good being 0-1 when East Carolina beats you as well. And Skip Holtz, you know a guy can coach when his last name is Holtz. And Skip Holtz gets a huge win against Virginia Tech today. And off to Daniel Porter up the middle. A three-yard game with a flag down on the far side of the field. I don't know if I call that a shocker with Utah and Michigan. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of what the troubles they had in the big house last year to start the year. But that didn't shock me to see that score today. Offsides, number 92, defense. Lined up and reaches off. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat second down. So a free down for Louisiana Tech. That's a big play there. Third and eight you were looking at versus second and five. Allows a lot more options for Frank Selfo up here in the press box sitting up by us. And he wants to run the football. Doesn't want to live on the pass today. Stretch the field to Jackson. And he has a first down inside the Mississippi State 40-yard line. And a great block there at the point of attack by Harrison, the tight ends. Two very good tight ends for Louisiana Tech tonight. You see them do a nice job. They'll move 47 Harrison around. He'll be on the line of scrimmage. He'll be a fullback. They're very interchangeable. They're a great job of getting to the edge, allowing Patrick Jackson to use those dynamic legs he has. Bennett draw up the middle to Jackson. And he picks up seven more yards. This is the third possession offensively for Louisiana Tech. It's now the third time they've moved into plus territory, and they still have nothing on the scoreboard to show for it. This is a big drive. And did you see the left guard, Ben Harris, there come in at the end of that play? We'll try to catch a replay, setting the tone physically, saying, I'm not intimidated just because you're in the SEC. We're going to play physical football as well. To the ground and Daniel Porter. 
is brought down after a gain of maybe a half yard by Dominique Douglas and Jamar Chaney. So now a big play here. Third down and three. We saw a lot of this from Louisiana Tech last year, partly because Patrick Jackson was not 100% with his toe. But Daniel Porter, a guy they will give a lot of carries to, probably the more physical between the tackle back. Patrick Jackson, a guy that can get in space and catch the ball and, and do more things. But you see Derek Dula there. He's going to use a lot of personnel tonight. Play clock down to 12. Took a while for Bennett to get that call from the sideline. He now sends back in motion. Here comes the blitz again. Well protected. A drop, though, by Patrick Jackson. That is unusual. He has great hands for a running back, at least Derek Dooley. Has no problems throwing him the football. And, Brock, now what do you do on fourth and three at the 30? They're going to bring out their kicker. Ostricker's got a nice leg. He's been a kickoff guy in his career here. Actually kicked field goals three years ago. But he's got great leg strength. They've got to get some points. You want to maximize some of this momentum that you've earned back after Mississippi State drove the field. I think I like this decision by Derek Dooley. You've got to try to get some points on the board. A 48-yarder for a redshirt senior who sat out last season and basically has been a kickoff specialist during his career. He has the distance, and he puts Louisiana Tech on the board. A 48-yard field goal for Brad Ostricker. And the decision pays off. I think that's the right call. I really do. And, and, and Ostricker, a powerful leg. He's going to be driving field goals. They're going to need more than field goals tonight if they're going to hang with, SC, with this SEC school. Some young Bulldog fans here in Ruston. This has been an event on the calendar throughout the preseason and the offseason and there's a few candidates for the black hole in Oakland. These guys might graduate and become Raider fans. <laughs> Louisiana Tech is on the board. A 48-yard field goal from Brad Ostricker. And at least that time, Brock, they came away with points. That's right. And, and I think you just after Mississippi State has a 94-yard drive and goes right down your throat, you need to respond. And that's exactly how you want to respond. Respond with points. Ostricker's kickoff floats down to the forward man, Damian Anderson. And Anderson barely gets to the 20-yard line. College Football Prime Dime presented by Jack Links as part of College Kickoff Weekend presented by Gillette continues Labor Day night on ESPN. Arian Foster and 18th ranked Tennessee taking on Khalil Bell and the Bruins of UCLA. The SEC meets the Pac-10 Monday night at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Just to further your point there, Bob, about getting those points, you want to keep those painted guys that you saw, you want to keep them in this game as long as you can. If they can be in this game in the fourth quarter, that's absolutely what Derek Dooley and his staff wants. It was an impressive drive on the last possession for Mississippi State. It began at their six-yard line and resulted in a touchdown. And now a flip end around to Brandon McCray, and he has the sideline. Flags down as McCray gets inside the 15-yard line and dragged down at the two if the play stands. But the flags are down back at the line of scrimmage. Great call there by Woody McCorvey to mix it up himself and to come back with a reverse option there. A terrific play. Louisiana Tech, as we've talked about, has been very fast flow. You've seen their linebackers running through the line of scrimmage, but this one will indeed come back. I think a holding call on Co-Eric Riley there at the edge. That's disappointing, too. Holding, number 15, offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of foul. Repeat first down. It's a hit. So many of those members of the defense they're running the wrong direction that's pretty obvious however co eric's got to keep his hands inside there stevon howe's a little guy we've talked about him tonight as well kind of swallowed up but you got to keep those hands within the frame anytime they get outside of those shoulder pads and you see that shoulder pad lift up especially that yellow hanky is going to be coming out but boy these guys can run big fast physical receivers from mississippi state They've been awfully impressive here with their athleticism early in this first quarter. It was a spot foul, so a 78-yard gain becomes a two-yard gain. You would get the unusual first down and eight for Mississippi State at the 22-yard line. Carroll will roll wide open. Aubrey Bell, he's got the 
sideline as well. And he's hammered out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Plenty good for a first down, a gain of 16. There's just got to be more confusion there again. You just can't be that wide open in Division I football without a mental mistake. And I think, not to point a finger, but Stevon Howes there again, running with the defender, vacating that area. That's just too much green grass. Are but you, you do see an injury there. It looks like Audrey Bell is coming off. And I hate to speculate, but that, that shoulder going into that bench <laughs> at the end of the play looks like he's a little nicked up there for Mississippi State. So Bell to the sideline, first and ten for Mississippi State. And again out of the shotgun, a good pitch incomplete. Delman Robinson, the intended receiver. Brock, are you surprised that this Mississippi State team that you know can be so solid running between the tackles, pounding it with Dixon and Dupree against a WAC team that doesn't have a lot of size up front, that Sylvester Croom's group, is this wide open on offense in the opening quarter? I am a little surprised, but what you're not seeing are a lot of deep drops. You're seeing Wesley Carroll get the ball out of his hands. We talked about Derek Sherrod, the left tackle, being out. They flipped their right tackle to left tackle. They have a redshirt freshman playing at right tackle, so I think they're just trying to establish getting the ball out of Wesley's hands and not have him back there put too much pressure on that old line. Harrell again to the air. Thought about it down the seam and instead slings it to the sideline to Delman Robinson. And that's good for a first down. How about the quarterback going to option number two and making that kind of a throw? And just as I say that, what does he do? He sits in that pocket beautifully. That offensive line that is makeshift stands pat and gives Wesley time to do that. Anytime you have that much time to pump fake down the field and deliver to the sidelines. But a great job, a quarterback in receiving, knowing one thing, come back to the football. I'm going to throw that football to the sidelines. I'm going to trust you're going to come back to it. And a great job by Robinson, the young guy out there from Mississippi State. Again out of the gun. Again a quick hitter to Robinson. And he has a couple of yards to the 44-yard line. Nice tackle by Dion Young. I really like the system and what Woody McCorvey is doing here for Mississippi State. And, and he's a guy that maybe has been known through his years at Mississippi State of being conservative, not taking a lot of chances, not running empty, not running five wides, not running four wides. But, boy, he's doing a great job of keeping Louisiana Tech guessing. A lot of different people touching the football. That's what a West Coast system, that's what Sylvester Crew wants in this West Coast system. A lot of people touching the football. And again for Carroll, and this time it's batted down by the blitzing Weldon Brown, who came from his corner spot. It'll be third down and seven. And it may strike people to hear that term, West Coast system, and people love to throw that out. And you look at what they're doing with option and this and that, and you say, well, that's not West Coast. I didn't see Joe Montana do that <laughs> and fake that handoff out of the shotgun. No, but it's the basic principles. In fact, they've gone up to Philadelphia. They've gone up to Green Bay and studied with those coaches. Sylvester Groom learned that system while he was in the pro ranks, has asked Woody McCorvey to do that, and they've certainly implemented a lot of the principles, not necessarily the entire playbook, but the principles of the system. Here comes the crowd on third and seven. Carroll hit as he releases. A wobbly pass. Intercepted. Picked up by Antonio Baker. The blitz works. Carroll threw a duck. And you see Sylvester Kroon there, the head down. That's something that Wesley Carroll, frankly, does not do. He does not throw interceptions. But he clearly gets hit here. Watch the safety blitz. Deion Young there, a great job timing that blitz up out of the secondary. And who was it? None, none other than Antonio Baker, the first team all whack defender, doing a great job getting up in the air, catching that ball against a bigger wide receiver. Who gets up in the air first, gets that rebound. And there, Antonio, great job getting up in the air first, snatching that ball away. Weldon Brown, the blitz man, causes the interception. And it's back to the offense and back to the ground to Daniel Porter. You see Zach Smith there again, filling in for Derek Pajit. Didn't even make the trip. They're all SEC safety. Zach, just a true sophomore, came in, played a lot of special teams last year. They like him, a physical football player. He also, a lot like Antonio Baker of Louisiana Tech, he wants to be around that line of scrimmage and get his nose in on those tackles. Second down and long. Under a minute to go in the first quarter. It's an end around Elias. Shedding tacklers brought down in the open field. 
A short gain, it'll be third and long, and there's a look at Weldon Brown, the blitz man on that last play, knocks the ball down, comes up and hits the quarterback and causes the interception. They weren't even sure they were going to have Weldon Brown for this game for the strangest of reasons. He was bitten by a spider one night earlier this summer while sleeping. The Bulldogs team doctors were called in. They put him on antibiotics. The bite worsened anyway. They took him to the hospital and had to clean it out. He was in the hospital for about two weeks. Derek Dooley actually told him, you are the luckiest guy in the world. Weldon Brown said, why? He said, don't you understand? You're now going to have spidey sense. <laughs> if the wide receiver gets past you, you'll be able to shoot a web out and grab him. But Weldon Brown, who has a million-dollar smile, and we had a chance to spend some time with him yesterday, still it's an open wound that they have to cover up. Derek Dooley was told about Red the bite. Foul. Ball start, number 60, offense. Illegal snap. Five-yard penalty. He said originally when the team trainers came to him, he just blew it off and said, well, it's a spider bite. So what? Put some ointment on it and get him out on the practice field. And the doctors, Brock said, no, no, no. You're not quite understanding how bad this could be. He probably had the same face he just had there with the, <laughs> oh, come on, a spider bite? And I loved what Weldon said to us when you said, oh, you're going to be like Spider-Man. He said, no, I'm going to be like Gladiator, where they cut that wound out. That's what it was <laughs> like. Right. I wasn't Spider-Man. I was Gladiator. He wanted us to call him Maximus. Third down and long. Bennett from inside his 15-yard line underthrows Patrick Jackson. <laughs> So Louisiana Tech unable to do anything with the interception. Here comes the punting unit as Cortez McCraney again was in the backfield. One thing you're seeing a lot of tonight is Taylor Bennett on his backside. Even on these completions, on his third downs, he's doing a great job of also spreading the football around. But he is taking a lot of shots tonight for Mississippi State. And that's the one thing they wanted to do. You want to hit a new guy. When he's new to that system, don't allow him to get comfortable. They have certainly hit him a fair amount tonight in this first quarter. Cagle again to punt, and it's Jamel Smith deep to receive on what might be the final play in the first quarter. A shorter kick this time. Smith fields at his own 31 and goes down right there. Nice tackle by Stevon Howes, and that will take us to the end of the first quarter. It's a good one. A pair of Bulldogs in a 7-3 battle. Stadium, the home field for the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs taking on the Mississippi State Bulldogs. As we start the second quarter, Louisiana Tech with four possessions of the first quarter, three ending up in plus territory, and only getting a field goal out of those three possessions. Wesley Carroll looks to go up top to the sideline. He has a great wide open and overthrew him about 10 yards out of bounds. And I think the only reason he overthrew him was what you saw there at the very end. On his back on the line of scrimmage, Kwame Jordan, the J.C. transfer there, does a nice job of at least getting pressure. You don't always need sacks out of those defensive line. You need hits. And last year, Kwame Jordan, how about 17 and a half sacks at the junior college level last year? 17 and a half. Making a big play there because you're absolutely right, Bob. A wide open receiver once again for Mississippi State. Although you made the point earlier, Brock, about the inexperience of this group, not just at the defensive ends, but the defensive tackles as well for Louisiana Tech. And now motion in the line. This will be a false start. Marcus Green seemed to hop early. Hey, full snap. Full start. Number 32, offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. So Mississippi State goes backwards. And there's just as much inexperience without Derek Sherrod at left tackle in the offensive line for Mississippi State as there is in that defensive line for Louisiana Tech. I'd say right now they're holding their own. Their execution, especially in that run game, they haven't done a lot of it. But so far, it's so good, I think, for Sylvester Kroon and his young guys up front. Carroll, a play-action pick. Up the seam for McCray. It floats, and it's picked off. Steve Stavon Howes has it. Gets to midfield, the second first half interception for this Louisiana Tech defense. 
look at Sylvester. Anytime a head coach, trust me, when you're a quarterback and you run off on the sidelines and your head coach has that posture, you've done something wrong. Again, great protection from that crew up front. He just let go of that ball a little bit early there. You see some miscommunication between he and McCray. That ball gets over the top. And how about Stevon Howes? That's college football for you. You get beat on one play, you come back and respond nicely there with a critical interception. We expect as well at some point to see Tyson Lee at quarterback after that interception thrown by Wesley Carroll. You wonder if it might be next. A first down for Philip Livas. And right now, with things firing up here in Ruston, we go back to the studio. Wendy Nix at a sports center right now. Bob, Sports Center right now up to Vinny Wells, the running back for Ohio State, left with a right foot injury, helped off the field, but x-rays are negative. Jim Trestle says he'll be all right. And Kurt Warner tabbed as Arizona's starting quarterback for the Cardinals season opener at San Francisco over Matt Leiner. Sports Center on ESPN after the Missouri-Illinois game. Wendy, thank you. Taylor Bennett floats this one out of bounds. It'll be second down. And 10, and that's good news for Ohio State fans. Boy, you could feel all of the air go out of that horseshoe today when Beanie Wells limps off the field. They've got Ohio in their next game, so a couple of soft start games, Brock, but you're still talking about a short two to two and a half week recovery, depending on when Beanie Wells might be able to get back on the field before Ohio State plays USC. Porter with a flag down for about four yards. Boy, you just don't want that. If you're Derek Dooley in Louisiana Tech, you got another drive. You get that interception. You're inside the 40-yard line. You just can't have, if indeed as it looks like what is expected, probably a holding play. You just can't have those drive debilitating calls. Holding number 19 offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat second down. That's Shane Womack, the senior there for Louisiana Tech. You just can't have that when you're trying to make something happen. This game is going to be difficult enough against an SEC school that's bigger, that's faster, that's stronger than you. You just have to minimize those mistakes. And, boy, they become glaring mistakes when you're moving that football into their territory. Well, this is the fourth time in the first half that Louisiana Tech has the ball in Mississippi State territory. And still, they only have three points on the board. An empty formation as Patrick Jackson motions five wide. Bennett up the seam, right through the hands of the normally sure-handed Philip Beck. Damon Glanton was there in coverage. It'll be another long conversion now for Louisiana Tech. And that's disappointing there for Taylor. And again, I harbor back to just these guys haven't worked together. You know, it's it's one thing to be out here with nobody in the stands without a defense lined up against you and get some of that timing, simulate that in scrimmages, but you get these live snaps. That was a good throw by Taylor. He anticipated, and Phillip just wasn't quite ready. Didn't get that head around in time to catch that football. So after the interception got them to midfield, and Lavis picked up a first down. Now it's third down and 20. Bennett down the sideline, a step there for Jack Wheeler, and he's got it. Not only is it a third and 20 conversion, it's first and goal of the seven. <laughs> and how many of these third and extra long situations are they going to convert on? A great job, and look at Wheeler here at the very top of the screen, just, just, just staying alive. There he feels Taylor come out of the pocket, and that's what a veteran does. Wheeler's been around here. He understands, stays alive, gives Taylor a chance. Quickly, it's Jackson. And he is brought down at about the six-yard line. Brandon Cooper on the stop. It'll be second down and goal. And you saw after that play, Taylor running down, trying to get his guys to the line of scrimmage. That clock is running now in college football. A little bit quicker after those big plays. Again, that's experience. That's Taylor Bennett having played 13 games for Georgia Tech last year. Understanding game management, understanding get his guys to the line of scrimmage and make that next play. Don't just look at that last big play. Now we got to concentrate and make the next play. Second and goal at the five. Jackson offset as the lone setback. Five is in motion. They pitch it to Jackson. He'll throw it to the back of the end zone and it's intercepted. Picked off by Keith Fitzhugh. The halfback option pass backfires on Louisiana Tech and Mississippi State dodges a bullet. And how many times did we watch college football this year? Did we see in college football critical 
mistakes, just errors you just can't have. In this situation, your senior, Patrick Jackson, wanting to make something that just simply isn't there. Keith Fitzhugh, the safety there for Mississippi State, a senior, a disciplined football player, stays where he's supposed to be and makes a critical interception. It seemed like Jasper O'Quinn, the corner, came up undercut Jackson and I think just made him make a decision a lot earlier than he wanted to that's exactly right about whether or not to throw it away so on the turnover now it's first and ten Anthony Dixon up the middle for maybe a yard Brock aren't the tailbacks in that spot coached roll right and if you don't have it and you're not sure it's not wide open just throw it out of the back of the end zone. Maybe he was even trying to do that, but he was undercut. I can't tell you how many times I've played with running backs in my past where they have that opportunity and they say, oh my gosh, I didn't know how hard it was to play quarterback. You have to make those decisions so quickly. And here you see Tyson Lee, he's come into the game. He's going to have to make some decisions quick. But you're right, Bob, they happen so much faster than they do in that walkthrough yesterday. Here's that quarterback switch that we knew at some point during the game is coming. Lee with a quick hit. To Aubrey Bell, and he's walked down about two yards shy of a first down, so it sets up third down and short. Again, Tyson Lee was a January walk-on for this team after coming to Mississippi State. Already he's earned a scholarship and a place, at least as far as Sylvester, Sylvester Kroom is concerned, at a quarterback rotation with Wesley Carroll, and Carroll with two first-half interceptions. Lee now takes over. Much like Taylor Bennett, two very bright guys. You saw the 3.9 GPA there. An academic, an athletic All-American in junior college was Tyson. Third down and three. And that is a first-down catch made by Jamel Smith. Great composure there by Tyson. You saw Louisiana Tech likewise, a defensive coordinator. He sees a new quarterback. He wants to speed that game up for that quarterback. They bring the inside pressure. Tyson does a great job of just being patient, just buying enough time to allow his receivers to work in a great third down conversion for Mississippi State. So Wesley Carroll forced to sit and watch Tyson Lee. And if you wonder... Lee fumbles the center exchange. If Carroll at some point is going to get a chance to come back in the game, he's going to have to clean up those mental mistakes he made in the first 20 minutes of the game. That's right, and that's a little surprising to see those interceptions here. You see a quarterback center again, some new people. You get into the heat of this action, some new folks taking that first or second live snap of Division I football, and that happens. But Wesley Carroll last year, 137 consecutive passes to start his career without an interception two tonight and I think uh, that one that, that little second one especially letting that ball just get away from him that got old Sylvester's hands on his hips one shot of the national record set by Mike Gundy when he was the quarterback at Oklahoma State rolling right as Lee on second down and a long 11 up the sideline Smith tries to haul it in incomplete out of bounds so it will be third down and long and again bringing some more pressure Tommy Sprangler the defensive coordinator for Louisiana Tech up here he's a guy that told us yesterday frankly I've got to be right when I guess tomorrow and I bring my pressures I've got to get home and I've got to be right with my calls so far so good and a, and a, a nice play there by again Kwame Jordan running that play down from his defensive end spot the critical third and 12 now for the Bulldogs this Louisiana Tech crowd Making a lot of noise as their defense has played a tremendous first half. Really only one long Mississippi State drive. And they've taken the ball away a couple of times. And now they force Tyson Lee to call timeout. 10-16 to go before halftime. Mississippi State in a tussle with Louisiana Tech. Tonight's game is being broadcast on ESPN2 in high definition. Bob Wischusen and Brock Heward at Joe IA Stadium in Ruston, Louisiana, the home field for Louisiana Tech, and they are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mississippi State out of the SEC. Louisiana Tech has put Mississippi State in a third down and long. Tyson Lee just coming on at quarterback, and now he goes down. Sacked by DeAnthony Smith, and that was a coverage sack. It could have come from any number of those Louisiana Tech front seven.
a great job of collapsing the pocket and once again look at the pressure look at all the guys coming off the edge there you see Weldon Brown once again bringing it and the shot how about welcome to division one football there Tyson Lee with about nine bodies flying around you and Quinn Harris there I think finished up the sack with DeAnthony Smith and DeAnthony Smith grabbed him around the ankles and gave Quinn Harris that hit all those linebackers dream about on your quarterbacks just hold him there so I can plow him a fair catch made at the 38 yard line by Beck but there's a flag down back where Blake McAdams released the punt Looks like a five-yard penalty here. He's asking Sylvester Kroom, do you want the five yards? And a re-kick. Running into the kicker on the defense. Penalties declined. First down. So Sylvester Kroom was happy with that kick by Blake McAdams. And after a post-checkered flag dust up last weekend at Bristol, Kyle Bush and Carl Edwards renew their rivalry out west while Casey Kane, Clint Boyer, and Denny Hamlin look to stay on the right side of the chase bubble. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Pepsi 500 at California on ESPN Sunday, August 31st. Coverage begins with NASCAR countdown at 7 Eastern. Kyle Busch with a 212-point lead over Carl Edwards. And look at the battle between Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jimmy Johnson for third place. Only two points separate those two drivers. Now, there have been plenty of drives tonight for Louisiana Tech into Mississippi State territory. Patrick Jackson goes up the middle for three yards. If they cross the 50 here, Brock, it would be the fifth time in the first half that Louisiana Tech would get the ball into Mississippi State's half of the field. And they've only got three points. I'm not sure if you're Derek Dooley. Is the glass half full of the game? Is this close or is the glass half empty that you've missed those opportunities? It's half empty. <laughs> I guess for coaches, it's always half Absolutely. empty. Absolutely. Penalties, turnovers, those drive killers have negated those positive possessions. Second down at seven, and Taylor Bennett looks to be changing the play at the line. Plenty of time on the play clock, only a ten. He may have checked to a run call, but did work. Patrick Jackson cut down by Cortez McCraney. And it's time now for the Aflac trivia question. Gotta wait for the duck. Love the duck. All right, how many teams, formerly Division 1A, the Football Bowl subdivision, have the nickname Bulldogs. How many 1A teams we've got? I, I know at least two. Are you really asking me that question? <laughs> Third down and seven. We'll have the answer. Where did that come? Is that an email from somebody? Well, we've got two Bulldogs on the field now, so we'll have that answer coming up a little bit later on. That ball kind of down at the line. It'll be three downs and out for Louisiana Tech. Tim Bailey came through and knocked it down. There's at least two in the SEC and in the WAC. Just in these two conferences, we're already up to four. We'll have to start counting. I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> I can just tell you that right now. <laughs> well, I least... can tell you that's the spirit of 88, that, the, that these Louisiana Tech Bulldogs became a 1A team in 1988. Apparently, only the players are allowed to touch the Bulldog and the coaches, and I have to tell you, I'm not going near it with those two guys. Standing alongside, Jamel Smith makes one man miss at the 11 and gets out to about the 17-yard line with under eight minutes to go in what has been a very competitive first half. Plenty of offensive opportunities for Louisiana Tech, but they have held Mississippi State at least defensively in check. Only one touchdown on the board so far. After All-American. Still getting some work in. In a few years since she has plied her trade in the WNBA. A quick hitch to Brandon McRae. Stiff arms a man down the sideline and picks up a Mississippi State first down. And Brock, this is the fifth time out of six offensive possessions in the first half that Mississippi State has started inside their own 20-yard line. Remarkable. I, I think if you asked Derek Dooley that, you asked me earlier whether the glass was half full or half empty. If you told him that, Boy, he would think this game is much different than 7-3. to three. But what you saw there is you saw the quick little hitch, rather. That was a called run. That's a West Coast print boy. Called run. They load the box. We're going to take those one-on-one -on -one matchups outside. It's still Tyson Lee in a quarterback, and it's Anthony Dixon muscling his way for another first down across the 40 with help from Craig Jenkins. Normally a reserve guard. And it's time now to already bring you our Aflac 
answer. We've got two Bulldogs in the house tonight in Mississippi State and Louisiana Tech. So how many formerly Division I-A football teams? You or? got Fresno and you got Georgia. Plus the two we have here. So we know we've got four. Were we able to come up with any others? No. Four. Two in the SEC and two in the WAC. Pretty good. Pitch out to Christian Dupree. And he has four yards to the 45. I think this is what Sylvester Croom wants to see. I think if you were to ask him, at least what he's told us this week, he wants to pound the football. And, and it's great to be tricky and throw these balls and get it empty. But at the end of the day, he wants to put his hands on his hips, his hands on the ground, and grind out four yards, five yards. Win on first down. Stay in these second and six, second and five manageable situations. And ultimately grind that clock down. Spend some time talking to Sylvester Croom and you get a master's degree from a coach, Anthony Dixon, just about caught behind the line and finally does lose a few yards. Check that Marcus Green on the carry, and that was snuffed out immediately by Louisiana Tech. So now it's third down and eight. And I don't, and I don't fully understand that. Again, you're having some success running the football. Is there a need here to all of a sudden get a little tricky? And Marcus Green is their tight end. He's a converted running back, so he's natural carrying the football. But I just don't see the need for that call on second and six when we've had some success simply running at a smaller Louisiana Tech defense. Well, I mean, Jordan and Quinn Harris did a great job staying home. So once again, the crowd sensing an opportunity for this defense. And it's a draw on third down and long. Running through arms is Anthony Dixon. He's got a first down and more. Caught from behind inside the 30 down to the Louisiana Tech 27-yard line. That is Mississippi State Bulldog football. That is what Anthony Dixon has done the last two years. 450-plus career carries. Woody McCorvey, Sylvester Croom told us this was the best camp he's had. He's lost weight. He's more agile. He's more quick. You see everything right there with a total package put together. You see the quickness. You see the athleticism to hurdle Howes once again. And then you see the speed to get down the field. This is an NFL type of running back. That body. 230, 240 pounds. I expect to see a little bit more of that over the next two and a half quarters of football. Dixon had a thousand yard season last year and scored 14 times. Christian Dupree pounds the football inside the 20 down to about the 18 for nine more yards. Well, Louisiana Tech even thinking about stopping an SEC rushing attack would have been folly a couple of years ago, but they had a magnificent turnaround from two years ago to last year, especially in their run defense. They actually shaved 88 yards per game on average in their run defense from 2006 to 2007. But they're getting an earful of Anthony Dixon and Christian Dupree here in the first half. This time, though, instead of going north-south, Dixon's going east-west, and he's brought down for a loss. Weldon Brown and Brian Jackson combined on the stop. And here's just a little nuance to football. And again, you're talking about a quarterback in Tyson Lee taking some of his first live snaps. Watch, you see there on the snap, on that quick pitch, that is a pitch you want to be seamless. When he gets that ball from center, you want that ball right in your running back's hands, an extended handoff. That's twice now on those pitch plays that he's had to bobble. He already fumbled one snap at the line of scrimmage. A couple bobbles there that throws that timing off on that pitch play. Third and four. Tyson Lee out of the shotgun. Underneath, very close to a first down. Dupree was brought down at the 18-yard line, it seems. And he's going to be short by about a yard, maybe a yard and a half. A nice tackle made by Quinn Harris. So now what does Sylvester Kroon do? I don't see any kickers running on the field. I know that. And there's two of Tech's players. Derek Dooley was very honest. He said, if we're going to win this game tomorrow night, I need my best players to play their best football. There you see Brown and Harris. Making the play. Two seniors getting the job done. And with 3.43 to go before halftime, a timeout called by Mississippi State as they will talk over fourth down and short. 
Boy, welcome back to college football. Rick Neuheisel. Here comes Tennessee in your first game. That should be a good one. We've got a good one here in the first half. 343 to go before halftime. Sylvester Croom sent his offense back on the field to go for it on fourth and two. And then Louisiana Tech called a timeout. How about the decision here by Mississippi State after two timeouts? Yeah, this is a break your will moment in my mind. This is a we're the SEC. We are bigger and stronger, and we're going to run the ball right at you. So can the whack defense hold up? against this SEC offensive line. Dupree the tailback on fourth down. Lee will throw it to the outside, and he's got a man, it's Aubrey Bell. A first down for Mississippi State. Just when you expect them to come downhill, they throw a curveball at you, and it works. And that's why I'm paid the big bucks, to make the calls <laughs> just like that. <laughs> But that's football. That's opening day. That is breaking tendencies. That is, how about, Ty, how about the confidence there in Tyson Lee on a very critical fourth and two here to put the ball in his hands to make that play. And just too much space there. Louisiana Tech commits to stopping the run. Just too easy there, one-on-one. -on -one. First down inside the 15-yard line. Dupree on the handoff. And he's brought down shy of the line of scrimmage. Loss of a yard. Brian White, a junior from Spring Hill, Louisiana came up and led the charge. He played nine games last season, basically all on special teams. He's had a pretty good first half as a first-time starting linebacker in this 4-3. He really has. He's flown around this football field. I looked at him yesterday, and he's one of the guys that I pointed to to say, boy, that, that's, that's a nice body. That's not a whack body. That's a big, physical kid that can run, and we've seen him all over the field here. A loss of one, second and 11. So Lee now lines up in the gun. Quick pop over the middle, and it's caught. Aubrey Bell at the goal line and brought down about six inches shy of a touchdown. And that's your bigger body once again down in the red zone. You want to get the ball with bigger body receivers. Aubrey does a great job here on Deion Young. And Deion's a terrific football player, but he's about five foot ten. You see that body there shielding him away, giving Tyson that angle to lay the ball in. And how about Tyson Lee here? How about the composure on fourth down? How about the composure to sit in that pocket and deliver the football here for Mississippi State? Dupree the tailback. First and goal from inside the wall. Instead, it's the fullback up over the top goes Brandon Hart for the Mississippi State touchdown. The fourth down conversion works. The drive stays alive. And you wonder now if Louisiana Tech's will will have been broken. And that's the call that, 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 that those head coaches make when they have confidence in the other side of the ball. I don't think Sylvester Kuhn makes that call on fourth down if he does not like the way his defense is playing tonight. Carlson's point after makes it 14-3 with 2.15 to go before halftime. Power football up front, and it's the fullback, Brandon Hart, who scores. Fourteen three Mississippi State has the lead in a game that has been much closer than even what that score would indicate Louisiana Tech has been in plus territory four times here in the first half They've only scored three points their last offensive drive short-circuiting on a halfback option interception thrown by Patrick Jackson in the end zone and Mississippi State then responds With a long touchdown drive it is hot down there, down there on those sidelines. It has been well over 90 degrees consistently since we arrived. And now a mistake made by Carlson as he kicks it out of bounds. And I think Derek and, and Frank Selfo, the offensive coordinator, maybe had a decision to make there. Do we play it close to the vest? Do we take some shots? I think now with that ball going out of bounds, the field possession they're going to gain. We placed at the 40-yard line, first down. Two minutes to go. There's no doubt now that they've got to try to match some of the momentum that Mississippi State has gained. Now, Louisiana Tech has two timeouts. Let's remember how the timing rules have changed for the first 28 minutes of each half, but go back to what college football fans are used to seeing in the last two minutes. Once you get inside two minutes, and it makes those last two minutes a lot longer, you will stop the clock as they have always done on first downs, out-of-bounds plays. And 
there's a first down catch made by Philip Beck. And we'll head back to the studio and check in what's coming up at halftime with Wendy Nix. Bob, thank you. Wendy Nix alongside my partner Jesse Palmer getting ready for a busy halftime. Ohio State running back Beanie Wells out in the third quarter with a foot injury. We'll have the latest on his status. And after losing to Utah at home today, what did we learn about Michigan? And where do they go from here? We've got top ten highlights. It's a packed halftime show right now, though. Bob Brock, back to you to wrap up the first half. All right, Wendy, thanks very much. Damon Glanton was inter injured on that last play, so senior defensive back from Atlanta flat on his back at midfield. It's a first down again in plus territory for Louisiana Tech when play resumes. Once again, <laughs> in Mississippi State territory, and that is surprising to me that that's one of the first times tonight that we've called Philip Beck's name. He's a guy that Frank Selfo, Derek Dooley said yesterday, we've got to get matchups. We've got to get him in space. We really feel good about him. He caught a ball in every game last year for Louisiana Tech, the only receiver on their team to do so. And they felt like he was a guy they could match up against linebackers and safeties and have some success. I believe that's his first catch tonight, maybe it the is. first time we've called his name. He had a big drop earlier in the game, a deep ball over the middle that went right through his hands. But... You know, Derek Dooley, I thought it was interesting. He said it's probably an unfair comparison because really there's only one Wes Welker, but he is Wes Welker. I mean, at the collegiate level or certainly in the WAC, that's what he's capable of doing. A young man that no one wanted, undersized, couldn't run that fast, didn't necessarily, you know, have great hands as far as some of the high school and collegiate scouts were concerned, but we've got him. He's awesome. He does a little bit of everything. And, you know, Wes Welker is a guy that Derek Dooley is familiar with because it was a player that was on the offense that was part of the group that Dooley coached when he was alongside Nick Saban for two years as the tight ends coach with the Miami Dolphins. So he's seen Wes Welker up close, and he thinks Philip Beck is a reincarnation of sorts. But you're right, Beck has been quiet. What may be most indicative of that, last year, fifth in the country in punt returns. 17-yard average on his punt returns last year. So a guy that is pretty good in space and pretty nimble, and a guy that's got to get going if Louisiana Tech is going to keep this game within earshot. You can see at the top of your screen, DeMond Glanton, the senior, a little slow to go off. Charles Mitchell, a freshman from Clarksdale, Mississippi, replaces the senior. So Robert, Robert Gurley, pardon me, is on the field, a redshirt freshman. So a little bit less experience now as Bennett goes back to throw. And almost intercepted, threw it right in the hands of Tim Bailey, and Bailey couldn't hold on. That's a defensive lineman for you. <laughs> Throw it right at you. I don't know what to do with this thing. Uh, he is put in the spotlight. Tonight's Levi's 501 original. Mississippi State defensive end Tim Bailey served 18 months in Iraq. A tour of duty as part of the Mississippi National Guard. He drove a supply truck, and there were actually shells exploding at times when he was on his route just yards away from the truck that he was driving. He is a 24-year-old senior as Bennett misses on that last attempt attended for Josh Wheeler. But listening to him talk and even reading the articles about his experience in Iraq, he already has a degree in criminal justice. And when he's done with school, after playing football and finishing up at Mississippi State, wants to either join the FBI or the ATF after 18 months in Iraq. That is an admirable young man. Third down and 10. Taylor Bennett, again, well protected, dancing left, and underthrows Patrick Jackson. He had time to throw, but couldn't find anyone downfield, and now it's fourth down. And that's one of the dangers you're starting to see as this game unfolds. Charlie Harbison told us that, the Mississippi State defensive coordinator. As this game goes along, I'm going to feel more comfortable. Charlie, a first-time defensive coordinator for Mississippi State, and what he has found is those front four, though not getting sacks, they're getting to Taylor Bennett. Tim Bailey there, another hit, and Taylor... Now he's taken shot after shot after shot, and when you can drop seven in coverage with the athleticism that Mississippi State has, you're just looking at check downs, and that's all that Taylor has open to him, especially on those third and long opportunities. Bennett now seven of 23 for 126 yards. Kegel, a wobbly punt. Jamel Smith lets it bounce, and it rolls to about the goal line, where it is caught on a hop. Mike Compton, the third string tailback, was there to down it at the half yard line. That could be a huge play. Louisiana Tech still has two timeouts left. 
They may be able to force Mississippi State to punt from their own end zone if their defense holds up. How about that walkthrough yesterday? I don't think I've ever seen as intense a walkthrough with special teams led by a head coach. Derek Dooley leading those special teams. And Chris Cagle, you see there, an all whack performer last year. He did that time and time again for the Bulldogs last season. But, boy, that was impressive to watch Derek Dooley run those special teams yesterday. Anthony Dixon Mattel back six yards deep in the end zone. He takes the handoff and gets hit right at the goal line. Did he get back into the field of play? The officials say yes to the six-inch line. Oh, Louisiana Tech sideline thought they had a safety, and from our angle, it looked like he was close. Yeah, I don't know about that. That certainly did look like a safety. I think, you see, Faust there, a guy that blocks a whole lot of punts in there. He shoots through the line of scrimmage along with Brandon Jackson. Again, boy, I, I don't know about that. That could have been a critical two-point swing. He did just oh, get just the ball back across the goal line. His entire body was tackled inside the blue. One minute to go in the first half. And now a handoff that barely gets out to the two-yard line and goes out of bounds. Anthony Dixon can't go out of bounds there with 53 seconds to go. It stops the clock for Louisiana Tech. And now on third down, they can call their timeout and maintain a timeout for when they get the ball back. And again, what you're seeing here, watch Tyson Lee at quarterback. He's having to secure that snap. There's just some discombobulation there between quarterback and running back that you can't have. The, the timing and the flow of that run game, especially within the West Coast system and the principles, anytime that quarterback is gathering himself at the line of scrimmage, that's not a good thing. But you also got to secure the snap. It's a tough duty here for Tyson. Third down and eight from the two. Closer to third and nine. Play action lead from the end zone. We'll tuck it under and run. Slides down smartly in the field of play. That at least forces Louisiana Tech to call timeout, which they do with 44 seconds to go. That was a smart play by Tyson Lee. That is a very heady play to understand the big picture. So often I think you get into these games, into the flow of the games, into my reads, into my play calls, and not understand the big picture of, of what's going on with the time and the situation. There he does, and like you said, very smart to get down and make Louisiana Tech burn a timeout. So Anthony Dixon went out of bounds on the second down play. That helped Tech preserve a timeout. They only had to spend one. And already there have been some upsets so far on week one of college football. East Carolina with at least a mild upset, you'd have to say. It was a pseudo home game for them against Virginia Tech, and they beat the 17th-ranked Hokies. Bowling Green beats Pittsburgh at Heinz Field, and Michigan defeated by Utah, and that probably is the least upset of the group on that board. I think Pittsburgh might be the most surprising result of those three games. We'll have highlights coming up at halftime. McAdams gets it away from his own end zone and is fielded by Livas on the dead run at the 40 yard line. Breaks a tackle, he's at the 20, inside the 15, and all the way down to the 14 yard line before he's tripped up by Marcus Washington. 33 seconds to go. Louisiana Tech has a timeout and they're right back in the red zone. And how big was that punt by Chris Cagle? That goes fairly unnoticed. That's not anywhere on the stat sheet per se. Yes, it's an inside the 20 punt. But it's not down to the one foot line like that punt was. And it set up this whole set of circumstances. It set up Tyson Lee having to secure the snap and discombobulating the run game. It set up that field position there by Phillip. And what a tremendous athlete, Livas, a dynamic playmaker for La Tech. They call him Saturday Night Livas, and he's in the slot to the top of your screen. Jackson motions to the bottom of your screen. So it's empty once again for Taylor Bennett. Bennett fires to the five. It's tipped away from Beck. It'll be second down from the 13-yard line. Jamar Chaney, the middle linebacker, got back and knocked it away. Just a little too much slow development, if that makes sense. You, you just can't allow very athletic linebackers like Mississippi State has to sit and get a gauge on you and let them fly around in the football. You have to strike. You have to set the tempo. I think right now, Louisiana Tech not anticipating. They're not playing with the speed they need to play with offensively. 
As you can see, represented by those yellow dashes at the top of your screen under the team names. Each team has a timeout remaining. Here's Jackson up the sideline, and he preserved the timeout by getting out of bounds at about the seven-yard line. So now it'll be third down. If they get inside the three, they would pick up a first down. They still have a timeout left, does Louisiana Tech. So, Brock, they can pretty much call whatever they want here. Not going to be limited in any way, shape, or form here, other than the athleticism of Mississippi State, who's just playing a lot of zone cover, some very tight windows for Taylor and these skilled position players. Down in the red zone. Third and four. Bennett swings it wide open. Jackson one-on-one. -on -one. And what did Taylor Bennett tell us yesterday? He said, you know what my job is to do? More than anything, my job is to get the ball in the hands of my playmakers. He loves these skill guys. He compares them very favorably to what he had at Georgia Tech last year, maybe even better. And there you get the ball in Patrick Jackson's hand and let him win one-on-one. -on -one. The point after is blocked. This is returnable. It's a live play in Mississippi State. Should they bring this all the way back, would get two. But with 17 seconds to go before halftime, Tay Bowser, who, by the way, was the player a moment ago that Patrick Jackson ran over for the touchdown, comes in and to a certain extent redeems himself as he blocks the point after it's happened. And you saw that earlier today in college football. Virginia Tech blocked the PAT, actually ran it back, gained those two points. That would have been two points if they were able to convert that back down the field. I don't, know, I don't know how much that hurts you. you know, I, I, yeah, yeah, it hurts. Yes, it's a point, but it's not a blocked field goal. I, I think you can't take away the momentum you gained on this play right here. Taylor Bennett does a great job of putting that ball on the belly of Patrick Jackson. He puts that ball behind him. He puts that ball too far in front of him. He does not allow Patrick to do this. Get those shoulders turned and run over Tay Bowser. I think he likes it. What do you think? I think Derek Dooley was a fan of that play. Yes. And you know what? As you said, he was the special teams coach at yesterday's walkthrough. This won't make him happy. A mistake on special teams allowing Bowser to get to the outside to deflect the ball and cost them a point. But what has to make him very happy, I would think, is, as you said, that was a special teams touchdown. The two biggest plays, the punt to the one-yard line, and then the punt return by Philip Livis that got them to the 13-yard line to start the drive. It's won a lot of games for Frank Beamer at Virginia Tech. Special teams out. And, and Derek Dooley cut his teeth at LSU, coaching some special teams, doing some recruiting, knows the importance of that special team. And in fact, today it hurt Frank Beamer. <laughs> they end up losing to East Carolina on a block punt. So special teams, a critical facet of football. A pooch kickoff resulting in a fair catch made at the 33-yard line with 16 seconds to go before halftime. Nelson Hurst got out of bounds. Let's remember that a few possessions ago for Louisiana Tech, Patrick Jackson had a chance to throw a touchdown pass, but Jasper O'Quinn, the cornerback on that side, came up and undercut Jackson's knees, forced him to throw it a little bit early, and turned into an interception for Keith Fitzhugh in the end zone. So finally, Mississippi State, seven times in the first half, they began a drive in plus territory. And it took them all that time on their seventh attempt to score a touchdown. They're right where they want to be, though. I really believe that. I, and, and you hate to say that. That sounds cliche. Oh, if I would have told the coach we were within this or that. But it's absolutely true. Derek Dooley, five points down at half, loves the way his defense has played for the large part. Loves the way some of the weapons have played and loves the fact to turn the adversity around and get close right before half. Our halftime score, Mississippi State 14, Louisiana Tech 9. We have a football game here in Ruston. Now to the studio, our halftime report, Wendy Nix and Jesse Palmer. Bob, indeed you do have a football game, and we got plenty of football games to play up. Welcome back to ESPN Kickoff Week, presented by Gillette. It's anyone's game here at Joe IA Stadium in Ruston. The Bulldogs taking on the Bulldogs. Mississippi State with a 14-9 lead. 
over Louisiana Tech, and no one is touching that Bulldog except the players. Those guards are making sure. Bob Schusen and Brock Ewart back here in Ruston, and I would say, minus being ahead on the scoreboard, Derek Dooley, as you said, going into the locker room at halftime, has to be really encouraged. The position his team is in, a very realistic chance to pull off an upset. They have controlled the line of scrimmage. They've been in Mississippi State's territory the whole first half. They only have nine points to show. And if they can eliminate the mistakes, you eliminate the penalties, you eliminate the turnovers, you're moving the ball and you're stopping them enough. And you're right where you're right. You're right where they want to be. And you look back at that first half and West Carroll started it out, you know, had a very nice drive down the field, a 94-yard drive, in fact, capped off by this touchdown. And this is one of those mentalists, just a breakdown in communication between the Louisiana Tech defenders there. But what do they do? They respond, and that was such a huge part of what Derek Dooley said. How do you respond to adversity? And even here, a second interception. Patrick Jackson there throws, you know, forced to make an early decision there, makes a critical error, but they respond. And Patrick Jackson comes back with a terrific play here. Squares those shoulders, runs over Tay Bowser, gets you at a 14-9 and gets that momentum back. You've kept this crowd in the game, as we talked about in the opening, Bob, the first time that an SEC or a BCS school has ventured to Ruston, Louisiana, and they're still in this game. They're right where they need to be. Well, Mississippi State's touchdown drives in the first half were 94 and 83 yards long. That's why they have at least a mild lead in terms of total yards, but Louisiana Tech, six of eight possessions that were in plus territory, in Mississippi State territory at some point. They only score one touchdown and nine total points. So Sylvester so Croom's team is probably, I would think even from a player standpoint, more of a battle than maybe these young men expected. They probably figured we're from the SEC, we're going to head to Louisiana Tech and just get the job done. Mississippi State did win the toss to start the game and deferred their option in the second half. So Wade Bonner is back deep to receive the kick and brings it out of the six. So Mississippi State will start the second half with the ball. And Bonner spins his way out to the 30-yard line and lost it on the way down. Louisiana Tech saying he fumbled. The officials, no clear signal yet. told me before this football game, your point, your analysis was if Louisiana Tech wins the turnover battle, if they're plus two at the end of this game, you felt good about their chances. We're going to look at here, was he down before? Yeah, he was not down. That ball was out before that knee hit. And right now, they're winning that turnover battle. They're winning that field position battle. Now they've got to win that battle on the scoreboard and convert and convert this turnover into some huge points to start the second half. Tristan Broussard, a reserve receiver, came out of the pile with the football. And Sylvester Kroom, I think, is going to use his coach's challenge. And it's probably worth the gamble. Time out to challenge the ruling on the field of a fumble. He wants a ruling that Wade Bonner was down by contact. Our first look at it was that he was not down by contact. Now, this is a rule also that has changed mildly from last season to this season. Of course, every play in college football is reviewed. You still get one challenge per game. However, if you are successful on your first challenge, you get the challenge back. And you could challenge one more play, no more than two in the entirety of the game. Even if you're right on both, you can't challenge once you've challenged two. If you are wrong on your first challenge, then you're done for the night. And based on the video evidence that we just saw, and let's take another look. Sylvester Kroom here is wrong. Bonner was still on his way down. His knee had not touched when the ball popped out. I think you can always tell by the reaction of that kick returner. How do they react once that ball comes out? And you saw Bonner immediately scrambling for that football. That tells me he knew that that After ball review, was out before he The ruling on the field is confirmed. It was a fumble. First down, Louisiana Tech. Mississippi State is charged with their first team timeout of the half. And that was their challenge for the second half. So to the offense goes Louisiana Tech as they are now plus two, at least to this point, in the turnover ratio. Taylor Bennett, for the seventh time tonight, has the, the Louisiana Tech offense in Mississippi State territory. 
the officials, I believe, may have to be very sure about where the ball is being placed after the coach's challenge, and it is placed right at the Mississippi State 30-yard line. So here we go, Louisiana Tech with a touchdown to take the lead. Bennett from under center, slings it to the sideline incomplete, looking for Beck. That's unfortunate there. That's, that's a little disappointing to see Taylor Bennett there rubbing his hands. He knows he's got to hit that one. There's an opportunity. Mississippi State brings their linebackers off the edge. That young offensive line for Louisiana Tech does a great job of picking it up, gives him a window, gives him that pocket to throw. And that's one on first down. You have to connect there to get that positive yardage. Second down and 10. A draw to Jackson. Just barely gets inside the 30. It'll be third down and eight. Some big boys in the middle of that Mississippi State defensive line. The success that Louisiana Tech has had running the football has not been necessarily between the tackles at that beef of Mississippi State. They've done a nice job of trying to gain the edge at times. Patrick Jackson, just five first-half carries, in fact. It's going to come down to Taylor Bennett. He's got to find a way when he has those open receivers to connect. Big play here, third down and nine. And a shotgun, it's Bennett. Flags down, he floats one up the seam for Beck, and it's an easy interception inside the five-yard line for Keith Fitzhugh. If the play stands, Mississippi State takes it back with a turnover of their own. But there are flags down back at the line of scrimmage. And Taylor Bennett's desperately hoping that somehow is against Mississippi State because of that. Illegal formation. Only six men on the line of scrimmage on the offense. Penalties declined. First down. A dodged bullet for Mississippi State and a terrible throw by Taylor Bennett. That is... The worst of the night by far, he floated one to the goal line. Even if he had a receiver in the area, it at best would have been a jump ball. Yeah, that's one you don't uh, want to get on that phone call with there. You're going to see Mississippi State there drops Tim Bailey into coverage. They drop eight guys deep into coverage. That's one there you just can't force, especially getting that turnover that you just got on, you know, offensively. You just got to throw that one away and live for another day. Second interception of the night for Keith Fitzhugh, and that one was easier than the first. Wesley Carroll is back in the quarterback now. And he flips it up the sideline to Eric Hoskins, the fullback, the cancer survivor. At one point diagnosed with throat cancer, had two surgeries done, had to rehab, obviously, after going through treatments following the surgery, and has returned now to play fullback at Mississippi State, and even Dealt with nerve damage in his shoulder last year that had to be dealt with. A former walk-on and probably one of the more inspirational stories for this Bulldog group. Picks up the first down at first and 10 at the 26-yard line. Looks like Wesley Carroll might be changing the play with eight on the play clock. Straight hand off to Dixon. Out close to the 30-yard line. That's pretty amazing there. You look at the two safeties of Louisiana Tech. They came all the way down to about seven yards. They left man-on-man -man outside and committed nine guys to the box, nine guys to try to stop that guy. Look at that. Look at all the bodies here, the mass of humanity. You've got one-on-one -on -one outside, and outside of that, you've got a lot of people within that box to try to slow down that run game. And Dixon still picked up four yards. <laughs> so it's second down and six. Carroll at the shotgun, looking to spread that defense out a little bit more and find a crease for Dixon. And Anthony Dixon picks up a first down. It's amazing looking at these first half stats. If you were to have asked me watching that first half, what were Anthony Dixon's first half numbers? I'd have said, ah, what? What do you have? Six or seven carries, maybe 35, 40 yards, right? Look at those first half stats. 11 carries, 67 yards. Just as you said, it doesn't look like much, but he's carrying guys for three, four, five yards. You take a look at what he did in the first half. And for the most part, did his work right up the middle. 43 yards between the guards. And he's up to 78 yards rushing now on the night. But now Carroll will put it up underneath. And Dixon was the intended receiver. He'd already 
tumbled at about the 43 yard line. So now it's second down and 10. That's part of what Woody McCorvey told us. He said, just because Dixon's 240 pounds and he's a hammer, don't think he's a one dimensional guy. We like him out of the backfield. We think he's a very good receiver. In fact, we think he's an every down player. In that time, Tommy Sprangler, Louisiana Tech, guesses right. They commit seven to coverage that time and just don't allow any window there for Dixon. He's surprised by the play call. Two carries, a first down, and now you give Louisiana Tech a second down at 10 situation. Back to the air, the slant underneath, a couple of yards shy of a first down on the completion to Coeric Riley, his first catch. So it'll be third down at about a yard and a half. I am a little surprised because, again, he's being effective when he gets it. Now, look at this. This is a West Coast principle you're going to see. You're going to see one, two, three receivers here. This is what they like to do, and they're going to run a slant to the backside. That's a very common. That is in Bill Walsh's playbook. Get everybody over to the field. Allow that one-on-one -on -one to the slant and dink and dunk and get into a third and three situation. Third down and a long two, close to two and a half. They trap it to Dixon. And he is able to pick up the first down by about a half yard. That is a big man. <laughs> it's, it, you don't realize how big he is when you're just watching him on TV. I was down there and looked at him earlier. He has some very large thighs. He is a very, very strong runner. And like I said, well on his way, I believe, by the time he finishes here in two years, Bob, he's going to shatter this Mississippi State record book on the rushing side of it. He's going to hold them all. Carries, yards, touchdowns. Just five away, in fact, touchdowns at the all-time record already. So Justin Broom said he ran for 1,000 yards last season and felt he left at least 500 yards out there. Just running technique, recognizing a crease, knowing when to cut back, and now Carroll forced to cut to the sideline under pressure. Pulls it downfield incomplete. Dropped by Janelle Smith. What a great throw by Carroll under pressure on the run, being chased Again by Weldon Brown, who came off the corner, and he was victimized by a Smith drop. That's pretty gutsy there. Already having two interceptions in your stat column there. He does a great job. You're absolutely right to buy some time. But to throw that football back across the field, and he put it right on the money. But to me, that tells me this kid's got some guts. He doesn't care if he's thrown two interceptions, three interceptions. He's going to keep gunslinging that football. And I don't see a whole lot of playing within our system out of this guy so far for the first 35 minutes. <laughs> Another drive that began for Mississippi State inside their own 20-yard line. Second down and 10, just shy of midfield. Harrell again rolling the pocket. A pump fake, and that will go down as a sack. Brought down a couple of yards shy of the line of scrimmage. Jared Barron came over and ran him out. Along with Nolan Darby, so now it's third down and 12. We talked earlier in the game, and, and you remember Tommy Sprangler yesterday saying, I've got to guess right. When, when I come after him, I better get home because there's matchups there with these big receivers that if I'm wrong, they're going to take advantage of. I tell you, these last two plays, he's done a terrific job of playing some coverage. And there they run a two-man route, and when you're in zone coverage, there simply is nowhere for Wes Carroll to throw that football. You may want to throw it away and save those two yards. Third down and 12. You wonder how many fans back in Starkville are watching the television right now going, how come we're not in an eye formation running it downhill with these guys on every play? There's a tip ball incomplete. It'll be the punting unit. That will come out. Nolan Darby came on a blitz and deflected the pass of Wesley Carroll. And this Louisiana Tech defense, they bent a bit, but they did not break, and they're about to get the ball back again with a chance to take the lead. And the drop there by Jamal, Jamal Smith on that first down play, but you've got, I, I agree with you, Bob, you've got to find a way to just pound this football. And you're going to watch here, this ball actually deflects. That's called using your head. Yeah, you've got to use your head, whatever you got to use. <laughs> that breaks a tackle at the seven-yard line. And spins his way out to about the 19, a nice 12-yard return after the first broken tackle brought down by Damian Anderson. Back to the offense goes Louisiana Tech in a five-point game. I'm poolside with John Graham, MVP of the Graham Honeymoon. John, what was the key for you this week? Wow, uh, you know, I just really wanted to come out here and play my game, you know? Get the latest info on my fantasy players, then set my roster for total domination. Can you describe your emotion? Uh, excited, proud, stuffed. That buffet's pretty robust. 
Okay, back to you guys in the studio. Be an ESPN MVP. Manage your fantasy teams, get live game cast, exclusive commentary, and more with VCast, only from America's most entertaining network, Verizon Wireless. I'm poolside with John Graham, MVP of the Graham Honeymoon. John, what was the key for you this week? Well, uh, you know, I just really wanted to come out here and play my game, you know, get the latest info on my fantasy players, then set my roster for total domination. Can you describe your emotion? Uh, excited, proud, stuffed. That buffet's pretty robust. Okay, back to you guys in the studio. Be an ESPN MVP. Manage your fantasy teams, get live game cast, exclusive commentary, and more with VCast, only from America's most entertaining network, Verizon Wireless. Sweetie. That's not what it looks like. New cheesy bacon tender crisp. Chicken so good, you'll cheat on beef. Only a BK. I'm comfortable in jeans that are tough. I'm comfortable in jeans that last. I'm comfortable in Wrangler. Real comfortable. Wrangler Five Star Premium Denim Jeans. Built tough with long lasting heavyweight denim. Built comfortable with relaxed fit. Satisfaction guaranteed. Wrangler Real Comfortable Jeans. Most brewers have a dash of hops. We use a pound of hops per barrel. We add some caramel malt to that. Samuel Adams Lager is a full-bodied, complex beer. But everything is there in balance. We haven't deviated from the recipe because it works. It's a great beer. 14-9, Mississippi State with the lead over Louisiana Tech. College football prime time, part of kickoff week. Presented by Gillette here on ESPN. And with a little over 10 minutes to go in the third quarter, Louisiana Tech has the football back, down by five. They go back to the air, Taylor Bennett slings it over the middle incomplete. Under through his receiver, Cruz Williams, and one of the all-time Louisiana Tech greats, Mean Fred Dean, an all-Southland Conference linebacker for the Bulldogs, then a second-round draft choice of the San Diego Chargers in 1975 and inducted to the Pro Football Hall of Fame this year. Spent 12 years in the NFL, seven with San Diego, five with San Francisco, and he is joining us here in the booth after this play. A little pitch to Philip Livas to the outside. He picks up about six yards. Bob Schusen and Brock Heward with Fred Dean. First of all, thanks for the time. And second of all, did you see Brock Heward's reaction when you walked into the booth? He just kind of flinched a little bit. You know, big yeah. defensive ends and quarterbacks, they don't seem to mix yeah, very kind of, well. Seems like a kind of rough. <laughs> Can you talk about your emotions that day in Canton a few weeks ago? Yeah. That must have been tremendous. Yeah, it was. It was a it was a very exciting moment for me, and uh, you know, it was a moment that I never forget. Uh, there was a lot of things that happened for me, and, and for that to happen to me, it was a uh, really spectacular. And how about this venue tonight? First time an SEC or BCS school has come into this stadium. Still second down. It's been a few years, but to have them come in and play this way, what do you think of Derek Dooley, what he's done for this program here at La Tech? Well, I think that uh, Coach Dooley has done a great job with the, with the Tech. And a lot of the things that I've seen and uh, uh, a lot of things that I've heard, uh, I'm saying just being around him is very inspirational. So I feel that he's done a, he's done a great job so far, and uh, I pray that he continues to do a good job. Who's the meanest tackle you went up against? Well, you know, it's hard for me to say because uh, all the guys that I ever played against, they were all bigger than I was, so you know, all of them were pretty good. <laughs> Standing next to you, that's hard to believe. Livas again gets out to about the 28-yard line, close to a first down, about a yard shot. How closely do you follow the program now that you've been away and, and obviously you're on the West Coast for your NFL career, but do you find yourself following the program pretty closely? Well, as often as I could, you know, I would always, you know, you always uh, look back and watch your old team, you know, whether it be high school or college. And, and uh, I get, you know, it's exciting for me to look at, look back at the high school and the college level because being the pros, you know, is a big difference. And uh, being yeah, you're right here. Yeah. You're right here from Ruston High School, weren't you? Yes. All right, man. I'm, I'm getting excited just looking at the, <laughs> these guys playing that. I'm a little hurt you didn't wear the yellow jacket. A fumble by Jamel Smith. It's loose. A scramble for it inside the 15-yard line. Does Louisiana Tech have another special teams turnover? They think they do. And they do. First and goal, Louisiana 
Tech inside the 10, as Smith couldn't handle the punt. Well, Fred Dean, we know you want to get downstairs and root on the Bulldogs. Thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it. Thank you, Pat. Thanks, Fred. Thank you. Another Hall of Famer. You might remember there was a quarterback that played his college football here at Louisiana Tech as well. That's in yeah, the Hall of Fame. He owns a few rings. <laughs> yeah, Terry Bradshaw was. It's amazing, and, and you know the stars that they have had here. Carl Malone on the on the hardwoods, and and you know obviously a couple Hall of Famers, and the guy that's also going to be in the Hall of Fame is Willie Rope. The left tackle eventually will also be wearing that yellow coat. But how about Nolan Darby? How about Louisiana Tech and what they're doing on special teams? Anthony Harrison came up with the fumble recovery. So another chance for Louisiana Tech to take the lead. First and goal. Then it might be changing the play. Play clock down to two. Gets it off up the middle goes Jackson. And he's down to the four yard line. And I guess it really shouldn't surprise us what they're doing special teams after what we watched yesterday. I mean, that was a regimented 45 minutes shuttling guys in and out, going through the different protections, going through the different blocks, going through all the different avenues that they're going to see tonight. And they are certainly capitalizing on their special teams. And you wonder here, is this four down territory? Probably depends on what happens on these next couple of plays. Second down and goal inside the five. Jackson swings wide, and he is brought down by a horse collar tackle at the seven-yard line. That is a penalty now. K.J. Wright brought him down. You cannot grab a player and pull him down outside the tackle box by the shoulder pads. The horse collar tackle that they ruled a few years ago in the NFL to be an illegal tackle up until last year was a legal play in college football. Not so this year. So that should be a free first down. First one foul, number 34, defense. Horse collar tackle. The penalty is half the distance from the end of the run. Automatic first down. And what's ironic here, Bob, is when we had our session in front of the college referees, when they showed the horse collar from college, you remember they had to go back seven years to a Plaxico Burris tackle because they, it just doesn't happen very often. And I don't know, that's awfully close. That rule, as it's written, as I believe, he's got to be yanked down from behind. I don't know if I'm buying that in its entirety there. I think K.J. Wright grabbing on for what he could. That's a tough call. First and goal, Livis is now the tailback. The fullback is Daniel Porter. And he has nothing doing. He may have lost a yard back to the five, maybe even the six-yard line. Brought down by Zach Smith and K.J. Wright from Mississippi State. And you're not going to just run at Mississippi State here. If you're Louisiana Tech, you can't simply, and Frank Selfo up here in the booth, you can't simply run between the tackles and push this pile. And I'm not, I'm not saying you need to run a half-back pass and be that ornate and tricky, but you need to have some innovation here and some misdirection if you're going to get in this end zone. Second down and goal. Bennett, draw, Dick Patrick Johnson, or Jackson rather, has a crease, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. Patrick Jackson goes over, and finally, Louisiana Tech scores points off turnovers, and they take the lead. And whatever I say, don't, don't believe it. <laughs> it's a fourth down, I said they're going to run right at him, and I said there, they, they've got to use some misdirection. They can't simply run right at Mississippi State. But they certainly make a statement. They really like that left tackle, Rob McGill. He's a redshirt sophomore. Their offensive line coach, their people think he can be a great player in this league. And boy, they ran right behind him there for the touchdown. Osprecher for the extra point. And he's got it. 16-14, Louisiana Tech. The first time here at Joe I.A. Stadium that they have hosted a BCS team. And they make the fumble by Jamel Smith on the punt return stand up and punch it over from a few yards away. Patrick Jackson with the short touchdown run. Louisiana Tech on top. Rings, a college Hall of Fame ring, an NFL Hall of Fame ring, and they've all been donated to his alma mater, Louisiana Tech, with now multiple NFL Hall of Fame players. And Willie Rope will join the group, Fred Dean and Terry Bradshaw soon. Brad Ostricker's kickoff. Coming down to Wade Bonner at about the six-yard line. As now Mississippi State with two big fumbles on special teams here in the second half find themselves trailing for the first time. And right now let's go back to the studio. Check in with Wendy Dixon. Well, Bob.
Bob, while you sort out Mississippi State and Louisiana Tech, here's a look going on around our family of networks. Alabama over Clemson 13-3 with the tide inside the five and threatening Missouri. Illinois 16-14, or actually 7-6 Mizzou over the Illini. That's on ESPN. So we've got good games across the board, Wendy, on our ESPN family of networks. Anthony Dixon, not much running room, being strung out by that Louisiana Tech front and dropped, gang tackled for about a three-yard loss. I just don't understand it. Again, you get in that shotgun, you start running laterally, I think you play to the strength of this Louisiana Tech, Louisiana Tech defense. You know, here you're going to see him in the gun, and anytime you're moving to the sidelines with a 240-pound back, I've got to question that. I don't understand that you're allowing Louisiana Tech, you're playing it in their hands. That's exactly what Tommy Springler and his defensive staff want you to do. They don't want this ball slammed down their throat. And now time really becomes, starts becoming an issue. Second down and a long 12, close to 13. This time Carroll under center. Throws it to the outside, tipped and incomplete. Off the fingertips of Delman Robinson. Now it's third down and 12. And Brock, correct me if I'm wrong, and maybe if we went back and looked at the tape, there was a little bit more sideline to sideline stuff, but I remember more the characteristic of those two long Mississippi State touchdown drives being, as you said, just more downhill running with big running backs. That's right. And then when you get that nine in the box that we showed earlier, you get all those bodies in. That's when you create those one-on-one -on -one mismatches. And that's what, you know, I, I really believe if they're going to be effective, they've got to get back to that brand of football. Third down and 12. A four-man rush for Louisiana Tech. Carroll still flushed out of the pocket. Flips it up the left sideline. Wide open, Caleric Riley. And he's got the first down. He found a soft spot and just kind of got lost on the sideline. And Wesley Carroll bought enough time to find him. What a big third down conversion for Mississippi State. Now it allows you to start playing that downhill football. But watch. Watch the patience here of Wes Carroll. He does a great job. Once again, he has a nice pocket around him. He's able to step up. Co-Eric Riley stays alive. Deion Young there's eyes are looking at Wes Carroll instead of the defender. A huge third down critical conversion. A gain of 26, just shy of midfield now. And here's Dixon. Running more straight ahead, picking up two, maybe three yards. And now Louisiana Tech again seeming to signal. They thought the ball popped out, but Brandon Jackson on the stop. It'll be second down. And how impressive is this kid, him, Brian White? A first-time starter here, played a lot of special teams in his career, but he has been active tonight, not intimidated in the least by this SEC school. and In fact, sticking his nose in. Look at the paint. You can always tell... <laughs> I love the paint on the helmet there. I think that's a great example of just how active he's been tonight. Mississippi State again, hurt on the offensive line without Derek Sherrod. Now with a foot injury and without Mike Brown as well, who was thought to be their best offensive lineman coming into the season. He was kicked off the team all the preseason. A spinning kick made by Delman Robinson. Three yard shy of a first down, sets up another third and short and college football primetime. Presented by Jack Links, all part of college kickoff week. Presented by Gillette, continues Labor Day night on ESPN. It's the 18th ranked Tennessee Volunteers heading out to the West Coast to take on UCLA Monday night, this Monday night, September 1st at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Three minutes to go in this third quarter, boy. This is a big third down if Louisiana Tech can somehow bow up here and get a stop. They're going to be going in the fourth quarter with a lead, more than likely. Third and three. Delayed handoff to Dixon. Busts into the second level. And is up into the 35-yard line. Again, Craig Jenkins with a good block on the interior of that Mississippi State offensive line, and it's a first down. Nice call there by Woody McCorvey. We've been kind of harping on him here. But a nice call here, a gutsy call on third down to run this draw. Again, I, I look at once again, and look at the timing here between quarterback and running back. That's just not as natural as that is supposed to be. That's got to be much more cohesive. And as they go along in this season, that will be much smoother than that operation. But at the end of the day, still effective. 17 carries for 89 yards now for Anthony Dixon, over five yards per carry. 
But now it's the shotgun formation again. A little hitch to the outside. And Delman Robinson, he's down the sideline with the first down. And he has ridden out of bounds hard. He jukes Josh Victorian to pick up 14. One thing I will say tonight for Mississippi State, they are spreading the football around. It's McCray, it's it's Delmon here, it's getting all the people, Smith, getting them all involved. Again, that's a component of this system. You want everybody on every play to be alive. You never know when your number's going to be called, and that makes it difficult on a defense to try to bear down and prepare. Different receivers have caught a pass tonight for Mississippi State. Back to the ground though, and Dixon. Maybe caught him, maybe picked up a yard, possibly two. DeAnthony Smith made the stop, and again, let's check in with Wendy Nix. Well, Bob, it's a Taco Bell studio update, and it finds the Clemson Tigers in all kinds of trouble. Alabama quarterback John Parker Wilson to Nick Walker. That's a touchdown, and it is 23, the tide over number nine Clemson. What does that say about the ACC? Virginia Tech picked to be right in the running, and Clemson, maybe your two top teams in the ACC, certainly taking it, uh, taking it to the head tonight. Two teams ranked in the top 17 in the country. One beaten by East Carolina, the other being hammered right now by Alabama. Carroll towards the end zone, tip, and it floats incomplete. So Eric Riley, the intended receiver. Josh Victorian broke it up, and it sets up third down and long. That's a dangerous throw there. We've seen that already tonight. Taylor Bennett throwing it late down the middle of the field. you got to be very careful. They, they run a little play-action pass here, and you can see Wes not necessarily saying any time you see that quarterback moving around in the pocket, taking his eyes off the middle of the field, you don't know what's happening. You've got to be so very careful to throw that thing late down the middle. I think a break there for Wesley Carroll, Mississippi State. And here we go again, another crucial third down. Third down and a long eight. A field goal would give Mississippi, Mississippi State the lead back. Carroll, again up the seam. Intercepted again, picked up by Deion Young. Breaks a tackle and he's got the sideline. Young turns on the Jets and Carroll runs him out at mid. And a flag comes out for a late hit. Deion Young was bumped on the bench. Brandon Hart, the fullback, adds 10 or rather 15 more yards onto the end of the run back by Young. Incredible, Bob, for a quarterback with seven interceptions all of last year. A guy that took great care of his body. You see, <laughs> Young here, he doesn't need no water. Was out of bounds. Personal foul. Late hit. Number 35. This is in the state. 15 yard penalty. First down. They're going to call Brandon Hart, 35, on the flag there. But like I said, take care of the football. That is Spencer Croom's number one creed to his quarterback. I think you're going to see Tyson the next time out. You just can't force that ball late down the middle of the field. Again, look at that. Don't force it. The field goal takes the lead. Tonight's game is being broadcast on ESPN2 in spectacular HD, and it has been a spectacular night for the defense for Louisiana Tech. A couple of takeaways on special teams, three takeaways by their secondary with interceptions, the latest of which puts them in plus territory again. And here's Philip Lagos. First down, Louisiana Tech inside the 25 to the 24. And you remember, we talked earlier in this game about Louisiana Tech having to attack Mississippi State. You can't have slow developing plays. That guy, Livas, is the antithesis of slow developing. Everything he does, his second step, he is full speed. A great call there by Frank Selfo. Getting number six, getting Livas involved as much and as often as he can. He's only a sophomore. He was actually a running back in high school. He had never been a wide receiver until coming to Louisiana Tech. And you can see there are different ways that they try to get him with the ball in his hands. And that running play gives them a first down. Bang. Inside the five. And Lagos pays the penalty and draws a penalty. Zach Smith comes up and levels Philip Livas. And this should be 15 more yards. 
Another point of emphasis this year. You remember the referees at our seminar saying anytime there's a defenseless wide receiver, they're going to throw the flag. And early in the year, you're going to see more of it maybe than you will at the end of the year. Personal foul. Helmet to helmet contact on the defense. On the defenseless player. Phillies half the rest is to the goal from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Ouch. <laughs> Let's take a look at this full speed. Because it makes it look even worse. That's a difficult call. I know you're going to listen to every defensive player and anybody that ever played safety that's sitting on their couch tonight. They're going to say, how in the world is that a penalty? And yet another one going against Mississippi State. First down at the 12. Track hand off to Jackson. And he gets down to about the 11, maybe the 10-yard line. And let's go back to our studios and check in with Wendy Nix. Well, Bob, thank you. A stiff early test for Illinois and Missouri. Illinois, we told you, scored. Here's how it happened. Juice Williams lobs it up 30 yards. Check out Will Judson. A nice catch right on the corner of the end zone. It was close. It would be reviewed, but the touchdown stands. No extra point, though. Missouri still on top 10-6. Well, that was close. Towards the end of the third quarter here. Again in business, Louisiana Tech trying to add to their lead. They lob it back corner of the end zone. Incomplete intended for Josh Wheeler. And the crowd favoring Louisiana Tech was looking for a flag. Marcus Washington was face guarding. And no yellow comes out. I think after all the calls, <laughs> the personal foul, the late hit there, the, the shot to the head. <laughs> I don't know what Sylvester Croom would have done if a flag comes out with that judgment call there. I think the right call. I think if the receiver would have maybe gone up and been affected, maybe the hanky comes out. But keep, it, keep the hanky there in your pocket. Quarter in motion on third down and nine. Here comes the blitz. Bennett tries to hold in. And underneath, looking for Wheeler, dragging across the middle. Couldn't get it to him with DeMond Glanton blitzing and knocking down the quarterback. And that means a medium-range field goal for Brad Ostricker to try and stretch the lead up to five. That's a big kick. You remember they blocked the PAT earlier in the game. This is not a gimme by any means. And not a surprise here. I think they were <laughs> – you're going to get after Taylor Bennett. I think if there's been one thing shown tonight, when they've got after him and when they've hit him and when they have blitzed him, Louisiana Tech has not yet responded in a positive way. Ostricker earlier tonight hit from 48, this from 28, and it is right down the middle. So Louisiana Tech turns this latest turnover, the fifth of the night for Mississippi State, into three. The Mississippi State Bulldogs have given the ball away five times, and yet with nine seconds to go in the third quarter, they trail by five. Now to me, if you're Sylvester Croom, that's the message you have to drive home to your team, right, Brock? Just don't make these crazy mistakes that we've made to this point. Look at the scoreboard. We're the better team until we shoot ourselves in the foot. And, and he is about as opposite end of the spectrum as Mike Marks. Mike Marks is a head coach. Let it fly. Ah, you turn it over. Oh, we throw an interception. Ah, you know, live for you. We'll get it back. Sylvester Croom, he is the exact other end. I mean, he is take care of the football. Don't hurt yourself. Play conservative. Play great defense. Great special teams. Don't give the other team opportunities. And he, uh, that is not going to be fun film. I guarantee, regardless of what the next 15 minutes and nine seconds turn out, that film in Starkville, that session, <laughs> that's going to be a live wire. And you wonder now if it's going to be Tyson Lee that will take over as we take a look at a quarterback that's not going to be replaced, Taylor Bennett, as he is on the phone upstairs. But Wesley Carroll, you would think might be. Tyson Lee came on in relief of Carroll after his second interception and played the rest of the second quarter and finished the first half six of seven for 44 yards. It was Carroll out of the locker room to start the third quarter and his latest interception is third of the night. Results in a field goal for Louisiana Tech in a five-point lead. Bomber out to the 20. Gets to the 26 before he's brought down. And after a post-checkered flag dust-up last weekend in Bristol, Kyle Busch and Carl Edwards renew their rivalry out west. 
They'll be trading paint with Casey Kane, Clint Boyer, and Denny Hamlin as well. All looking to stay on the right side of the chase bubble. It's the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Pepsi 500 at California on ESPN Sunday, August 31st. So that's tomorrow night. Coverage begins with NASCAR countdown at 7 Eastern. It is indeed Tyson Lee at quarterback for Mississippi State. On what should be the final play of the third quarter. He will roll. He will find Delman Robinson. And Robinson finds open territory to midfield before he's pulled down from behind. Deion Young missed the tackle, and that will end the third quarter. When we start the fourth, Mississippi State will have a first down in Louisiana Tech territory. And they need a touchdown to take the lead. The Camping World. You're watching ESPN Kickoff Week, presented by Gillette. A surprise result, at least thus far, as we start the fourth quarter. 1914, Louisiana Tech has the lead over Mississippi State. But Mississippi State in plus territory with Tyson Lee at quarterback to start the fourth quarter. A bullet to the sideline incomplete. And let's go back to the studio now. Join Wendy Nix for a sports center right now. Bob, the Tampa Bay Rays just don't lose. The Rays and the Orioles all knotted up at nine in the ninth. Then Rocco Baldelli with the double. Carlos Pena comes around to score from first. Rays win their lead now five games in the East. Also, Beanie Wells running back for Ohio State out in the third quarter with a right foot injury. X-rays are negative. Jim Trussell says he'll be back. Thank you, Wendy. Second down and 10 at the Louisiana Tech 49. Tyson Lee might be changing the play. Play clock down to one. Just does get it off. And he finds Aubrey Bell. Bell is brought down after a gain of five. Just like the way Louisiana Tech is playing defense, don't you? I mean, that, that's what I find myself watching tonight. This is the team that in 2006, 119 out of 119 Division I-A football teams. It's amazing the transition that they've done in just two years. Yesterday, I mean, last year, yesterday, last year they were on the rise. But, boy, they have held their own against an SEC-caliber team tonight. Two years ago to last year, when they were dead last, they allowed 11 points per game less. And they're even under that average tonight. A wide throw from Lee. It'll be fourth down and five. Now you're at the plus 44. There's only 53 seconds off the clock here in the third, in the fourth quarter. So it, clearly you would think a punting situation. And yes, here comes Blake McAdams to punt it away. And this is one of the difficulties when you're playing two quarterbacks. It's hard for them, for either one of them to really get into the flow of the game. I've never been a two quarterback proponent. Maybe bring a guy in. You know for certain scheme purposes but to me that's rhythm right there Tyson Lee not in rhythm first throw and what an hour and a half so Louisiana Tech will have the ball at the 11 yard line as Blake McAdams from a field position standpoint does his job but turnovers tonight have been the story Wade Bonner a kick return fumble here in the second half then Jamel Smith turns it over with a very tough punt catch Chance of Dion Young, the third of the three Wesley Carroll interceptions. Turnovers will wipe away every other statistical category. And Mississippi State with 150 more yards of total offense, but they're minus three in the plus minus. The throw is Bennett under pressure. Let's hit. And Beck makes the catch, takes out a photographer and picks up. Maybe a yard or so. Now to about the 14-yard line forward progress. They give him three yards. It'll be second and seven. And Taylor has to be very careful down here. Taylor Bennett taking care of the football. Your defense is playing phenomenal football. You've got Mississippi State completely out of sync and out of rhythm offensively. You've got to be very, very conscious of ball security here if you're Taylor Bennett in Louisiana Tech. Down in seven. The fifth year senior at the sideline to a freshman in Cruz Williams. Incomplete out of bounds. One thing 
one thing you'll say about Taylor Bennett is he has a live arm. That's exactly what this coaching staff talked about, and he put that ball right on the money. That's a play that is Cruz Williams grows, and they really like him. He's a physically gifted kid. You can tell there he's about 6'3", 6'4", very different than Livas and Beck. They feel he's going to grow in to be a great player, but he's got to find a way to make that play. Porter in motion on third down and seven. And it slants one, but has it first down. Out to the 26-yard line. Well, there's your Wes Welker comparison, right? Get him in the slot, get him on a linebacker, find the soft spot in the zone and pick up a first down. And they ran that play early in about the first quarter, maybe beginning of the second quarter. And I told you, Beck just didn't anticipate. He didn't feel that Taylor was going to come to him. Here, a great job of anticipating. And you see Beck all the way on the inside. Get that head around. And right when he gets that head around, that ball is on him. That's a little continuity that, that will grow as the season goes on between Taylor and his wide receivers. Big conversion for Louisiana Tech. First and 10 at the own 26. Increase for Jackson. And Patrick Jackson has nine more yards. He's quick. <laughs> yeah, you talk about Livas getting that speed in one or two steps. I think Patrick Jackson, very similar. A great kickoff guy in his career. A great total yardage guy during his time here in Ruston. But he gets to full speed very, very quickly. And that's why Frank Selfo, offensive coordinator, believes he has a chance to play at the next level. He's that dynamic an athlete. If he gets to 1,800 total yards this season, he would break Troy Edwards' school record for total offense. And he picks up the first down here with a gain out to about the 38-yard line. But he's such a workhorse from a ball-carrying standpoint that they don't anticipate using him as a kick returner as much this year as they have in the past. And they do now with some of these freshman wide receivers have some kick returning alternatives that they may not have had earlier in Jackson's career. What do you think is going through his head right now? 12 minutes. Why can't this be two minutes? Why can't this be a minute 20? Come on, clock. Work for me. <laughs> Trap handoff this time to Daniel Porter. And Porter breaks tackles and picks up nine yards. Now it's Louisiana Tech running it up the middle effectively. And if you can just sense a different body language. We're a long ways up here in the press box, but you just look at this body language of Mississippi State defensively. The hands on the hips. The head down, not flying around the football, doing what they do really well. Frankly, they've been discouraged, I think, tonight by their offense. They've been on the field an awfully lot, and that body language has got to change if you're Mississippi State fan. Second down and one. So they hand off again to Porter. Depending on the spot, he is right at the first down marker. Kyle Love stacked the middle, and that was helped by a gang tackle, so we'll see about the ball placement. And for those of you who might be looking for NASCAR Nationwide Countdown, that is underway on ESPN Classic. We have 11 and a half minutes to go in our game here in Ruston, Louisiana at Joe IA Stadium. And it's 19 to 14, Louisiana Tech, their last 12 BCS opponents have beaten up Derek Dooley's school pretty good. And this is the point that he made to his team. Not only have we lost our last 12 games against BCS opponents, but look at what happened last year. Against Cal, Ole Miss, and LSU, his team shrunk when faced with the challenge of taking on what would be perceived to be a superior team. And Bennett sneaks forward for a first down. And he wondered if mentally his team sure. could handle when they were put toe-to-toe -to -toe with an SEC school, how they would handle it now. And he was pretty confident that they would be able mentally to deal with the challenge more effectively than they ever did last year. And I think the term he used in the last 12 is bludgeoned. They haven't just been beaten. They've been bludgeoned over the last 12. And you're right. It was the basic fundamentals they were not doing last year that showed him mentally they weren't there. They're there tonight. There's no doubt about that. Jackson. So two moves off the line to make men miss. Gives him four more yards. And once again, Louisiana Tech is into Mississippi State territory. This is what you need to do if you're Louisiana Tech. This is ideally what Frank Selfa would have liked to have done in the first quarter. Have this mix of run and pass. Use those little check down routes, but pound this football. And with 10 minutes to go, this scheme and this plan is going to Louisiana Tech way. Frank Stelco, the coach there on your left. 
This is the 13th Louisiana Tech offensive possession of the night and the 10th time that they have made it into plus territory and they only have 19 points on the board. Daniel Porter, about a yard shy of a first down. And let's go back. Another update with Wendy Nix. Well, Bob, let's get you back out to Missouri and Illinois. Now, Chase Daniels had thrown an interception. That resulted in an Illinois touchdown. But you know what? Jeremy Macklin said, not to worry, buddy. I'll bail you out. The ensuing kickoff, he returns it 99 yards all the way to the end zone. 17-13, his second career kickoff return for a touchdown. Bob? Well, Wendy, a good one between those top two in schools and a very good one here in Ruston. Third down and a long yard. Louisiana Tech trying to keep this drive alive. They go to the ground and Porter. And he is brought down. It looks to be about a half yard shy. It'll be fourth down and less than a yard to go with 840 remaining. The crowd wants Derek Dooley to go for it. And it looks as if he might fourth down and at least a yard maybe a little more and his offense stays on the field and you know Brock first guessing I'm not sure they hustle to the line Bennett snaps the ball a handoff to Jackson and he's got it spins out of the tackle in the backfield Keith Fitzhugh made the stop but not before Patrick Jackson converted on fourth down and over a yard so you're telling me there mentally you weren't believing <laughs> I would have punted the ball. I have to admit it. I would have done that. And that's probably why I'm up here and he's down there. I would have punted. How about the push here? And Dominique Douglas has a chance in the backfield. That's mano y mano and Patrick Jackson wins. You can see Sylvester frustrated. That's about as much as you're going to get from Sylvester Crew from an emotional standpoint on the sideline. Jackson stays in the game as the lone setback after that tremendous individual effort to spin away from Douglas and keep the drive alive inside of eight minutes to go. Bennett wants it all down the sideline. Incomplete. Josh Wheeler, the intended receiver, broken up by Tay Bowser. And that's a shot. I like that. You get it into positive territory. You just converted on a critical fourth and run. Fourth and one. You go for the throat right there. You put the pedal down. You take your shot. You got your one-on-one. -on -one. Josh Wheeler, the big receiver for Louisiana Tech, stands about six foot three. A great throw there by Taylor, giving him a chance. I like that call. How about this drive for Louisiana Tech? The 14th play of the drive. And now they're going to start to turn the clock into a factor inside of eight minutes to go. Second down and ten. Bennett, all the time in the world, surveying the field and finally throws it away. Took a shot from Tim Bailey as he released it, and he's slow to get up. I think disappointing them when you take that shot on first down and you stop the clock. You had that thing grinding away. You saw six and a half minutes. And there are the numbers tonight. Not pretty for Taylor. I guarantee you this. He will be sore tomorrow. He has taken a lot of shots. And within those 168 yards, there were some big chunks. You remember Philip Livis, Philip Beck. They made some big chunk plays. And they need a chunk here on third and ten. Jackson goes wide. On third and ten, an empty set. Beck makes the catch, but well shot of the first down, stopped by K.J. Wright. So now it's fourth down and three. But at the 33-yard line, maybe the 32, depending on forward progress. They're going to kick it. Well, now you bring out Ostricker for what would be a long field goal. Even if he makes it, it's still only a one-possession game. Nope. You gotta be careful here. You remember on these long kicks, they already had that PAT blocked off the edge, but these long kicks, when these kickers are driving that ball, more often than not, if the kick is blocked up the middle, it's on these extra long kicks. This is just a hair inside of 50 yards. Well, it's got the distance. It's good! Brad Ostricker earlier tonight hit from 48 and 28. An extra foot and a half. It's still a one possession game, but now it's Louisiana Tech up by eight, 22 to 14. And that one would have been good from 60 plus.
Taylor Bennett's had a lot of press box conversations tonight as he has struggled at times, but his ground game has picked him up and his defense and special teams have taken the ball away. Five Mississippi State turnovers and it's 22-14. And this a moment ago was the head coach and athletic director here at Louisiana Tech, Derek Dooley, with some words for his defense. That's a coach that I think Brock still realizes this is a one-possession game. Kickoff taken at the six by Mill Stallworth. And Stallworth is brought down at the 25. College football primetime presented by Jack Lynx, part of College Kickoff Week presented by Gillette. It continues Monday night, Labor Day night on ESPN. It's 18th ranked Tennessee on the road in the Pac-10 to take on UCLA. That's Monday night, September 1st at 8 Eastern on ESPN. That's Weldon Brown being treated what looks like for cramps in his right leg. And Brock Ewer, you mentioned actually yesterday when we were talking about tonight's game that this was something that we would expect to see. We were watching the SMU Rice game last night and in what you would have to think was equally humid and hot conditions in August in Texas. Um, there were some players cramping up and, you know, I remember you turned to me at that point and said, you're going to see some of this tomorrow night. It turns out Weldon Brown here in the fourth quarter is the first that appears to succumb. That's right. That's mostly the weather. It's mostly the heat and humidity. The other part to that is the adrenaline. I think the adrenaline that saps some of that hydration, some of that energy. These guys are so wound up, especially Louisiana Tech. They have been waiting for this game for a long time for a host of reasons, not just the ones we mentioned tonight, but Derek Dooley has this community believing. How much did we hear that from the players, from the coaches, the sense of pride that has now been developed in this area that they just have not had? And he has come from big-time programs, Derek Dooley. He came from LSU. He was around his dad, Vince Dooley, at Georgia in the 80s. He knows big-time football, and he's trying to bring the big-time here to Ruston, Louisiana. And you mentioned this community, and this community is part of the larger Louisiana community. And you can sense even the tension in this area of Louisiana, northern Louisiana, with Hurricane Gustav approaching, God forbid, the New Orleans area once again. And we were actually looking to maybe change hotels for flights out and made a couple of calls to our ESPN travel department. There was not a hotel room to be found anywhere in Monroe or Shreveport for the next few nights. Most of the southern Louisiana Gulf Coast community, I think, preparing for evacuation circumstances as Dupree is dropped by Terrence Pillay. But already the Red Cross has been mobilized here in the Monroe Shreveport Ruston corridor, getting set to put shelters up and try and take care of as many refugees as they may get from the southern part of the state. It, all over the newspapers. And I think they're ready in this area to bind together and support their Louisiana brothers and sisters because they realized what Katrina did and how they needed to come together and help them the last time around. A slant incomplete. Brandon McRae, the intended receiver. Dion Young knocked it away. Again, for those of you who would like to watch the NASCAR Nationwide Series Camping World 300 of California, you can tune into ESPN Classic right now. And with under six minutes to go in the fourth quarter, we have a heck of a finish that we might be witnessing. Louisiana Tech trying for the first time to beat a BCS team in their building. They're six minutes away from getting it done, and now Mississippi State faces third down and seven. Lee will be sacked. Kwame Jordan brings him down. What a night for this Louisiana Tech defense. They needed big plays from their defensive end today. They felt they would need that in the run game at the point of attack. That was their concern coming into the night. The way they've controlled this football game, those defensive ends have played well in the passing game. They've not just had to play well against the run. They have done a great job of forcing that pocket, forcing the issue. Kwame Jordan, how about that acquisition? as a junior college player. And there you see De'Anthony Smith, another one of their star defenders in the interior of that defensive line going off. A lot of energy burned here over the last 55 minutes in Westbrook. 
So two real good defensive weapons. And that ball hits a Louisiana Tech player. That could be the break Mississippi State needs. A short kick that Stevon Howes had no idea was there. Hit him right in the back. And a recovery by Mississippi State in Louisiana Tech territory by Zach Smith. Wow. Wow. How about the momentum and some of the air in this stadium right now? You're ahead by eight points with five minutes to go. You're controlling the game. Look at the field position again you were going to have. You're going to be around midfield. And now you turn it over there, just not an awareness. That's a tough play for Stevon Howes. I realize that trying to find that short kick. But boy, a critical opportunity here for the Bulldogs, the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Play action for Lee. He'll be sacked again. Dominique Faust came around and got him that time. And that's a big loss. That's close to 10 yards. Back to New York again in Wendy Nicks. Yeah. All right, Bob, Illinois, Missouri, again, nobody's going to go quietly here. Derek Washington rips off about a 40-yard touchdown run. That's going to put Mizzou up top, 24-13. Wow, what a game, Wendy, between Illinois and Missouri, and what a game between Mississippi State and Louisiana Tech. How many momentum shifts have we had? Second down and 18 after the sack. Lee flips his screen wide to Brandon Hart. And he gets back to about the original line of scrimmage for a third down and 10. And who again? Brian White. We mentioned his name time and again tonight. And again, coming out of last year, Quinn Harris, their weak side linebacker, second team all whack, nearly 100 tackles. You didn't hear much about Brian White, but he is making his name, his presence felt tonight. They're a great job reacting to the screen pass. I think a terrific call by Woody McCorvey there. All this pressure, you try to dink it over and run that screen, but Brian White chasing it down. Three forty to go. A one possession game. Third down and ten. The ball is snapped, but a timeout was called from the sideline, I believe. Take a charge, timeout of the half. Mississippi State's sideline called a timeout just before the ball was snapped with three thirty two remaining. We'll come back to Ruston, where Louisiana Tech is trying to pull off the first time upset against a PCS opponent in a moment. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Gillette. Look, feel, and be your best with Gillette's full lineup of men's grooming products. And in part by Mitsubishi Motors. Hop in. It's go time. Three minutes and 36 seconds to go here at Joe IA Stadium in Ruston, Louisiana. Bob Schusen and Brock Heward with you. Late fourth quarter, third down and ten. Mississippi State does not have a first down in the fourth quarter. They don't have a point in the second half. They've been shut out so far. And they go empty. Here comes the blitz under pressure Lee. Just unloads it and Bell drops it. They are just out of sync. Don't you just feel that way? And I don't know if that's the turnovers. I don't know if that's the two special teams, the five, the cumulative effect. But they're just out of sync. That's a play in the first quarter that Aubrey Bell makes. And he may still be running. But as this game has wore on, Louisiana Tech has just got Mississippi State out of sync. Lake McAdams will come on to punt and try and take field position back. You can see with those little yellow dashes under the team names at the top of the screen. The Mississippi State only has one timeout left. So three minutes and 33 seconds doesn't seem quite as long as Sylvester Croom as it might in normal circumstances when you have your timeouts and now a delay of game call. Dead ball foul, delay of game, offense. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. And how about the response of Louisiana Tech's defense there? The, the, the fumble there on the punt that hits your own defender, all of a sudden you had a huge stop. You got to run back on the field, and they responded to adversity. How much did Derek Dooley talk to us about that yesterday? I want to know how our team responds. There's going to be ups and downs in this 60 minutes of football. How do they respond? I think they win with flying colors in their response to some adverse situations tonight. McAdams needs this one deep with only one timeout left. And it's a short hit. 
and takes a great bounce for Louisiana Tech. Finally down at the 36-yard line by Mississippi State. That's a 16-yard punt with three minutes and 23 seconds to go. The last thing that Sylvester Croom needed from his punter. Twenty-two fourteen is the score. The AutoZone playbook now with Brock Ewing. Sound fundamentals defensively. That's what you've seen from Louisiana Tech. This play in the third quarter, indicative of that Mississippi State running the play pass. Stout protection, running that deep over. And watch Deion Young. I circled him there. Watch him not buy that play fake. Read the quarterback's eyes. And bingo. Sound fundamental football. Play your role. Do your job. Louisiana Tech's done a great job of that defensively tonight. Louisiana Tech now has a chance to win the game. Only one timeout left for Mississippi State. A lot of time on the clock, 3 minutes and 23 seconds. But the last drive for Louisiana Tech, they held the ball for 16 plays. And up the middle on first down, they go with Patrick Jackson. Derek Dooley was gutsy earlier on that fourth and one that we talked about. And he's in his headset with Frank Selfo, the offensive coordinator. He's going to get these calls, and you just wonder here, is he going to be gutsy again? Oh, this is unfortunate. we got an offensive lineman down. Looks like they're center. That's Ron Roberts. This doesn't look like cramps. He kind of crumpled on his right leg, and it looks maybe it's his right knee, although one of his teammates came over and started to massage the back of his leg for a moment there, so maybe it is a cramping situation. And that's tough there when you get in those short yardage situations we drew earlier in the game you remember that drawing of massive humanity with nine defenders in the box that was an early down play that, that first down play there was a short yardage type of four minute offense that's where a lot of bodies get piled in there and unfortunately you see these kind of injuries as that pile can shift on somebody and kind of like that old mosh pit at Pearl Jam parties. You know, you just cannot get get out of the way of that thing once it starts moving. And I've been unfortunately, to many. Yeah, I'm sure I you know, have. I know what you're saying. It's hard to get out of that pit. And it's ankle there. He's, he's <laughs> <laughs> Where were you in the pit? <laughs> That's right. Well, for those of you who would like to watch the NASCAR Nationwide Series Camping World 300 of California, you can tune into ESPN Classic or stay with us as we check in with them right now. So the race is underway. You can certainly head over to ESPN Classic and watch until we're done here in Ruston, Louisiana. And what a day of college football it's already been. Look at some of the storylines today. Number one, Georgia gets off to a good start, as you would think they would against Georgia Southern. No Sean Moreno with three touchdowns. Ohio State loses Beanie Wells. We're not sure for how long. No problem with Youngstown State. And LSU... Upends Appalachian State. There were some other storylines as well with Virginia Tech going down to East Carolina. Pitt losing to Bowling Green, so a couple of top 25 schools fall there. Utah went into the big house and beat Michigan. And this could very well turn out to be a storyline that they'll be adding to that board if this result holds firm as Louisiana Tech has a 22-14 lead over Mississippi State with three minutes to go. But... They may be without their starting center, Lon Roberts, as David Accardo a moment ago, a reserve guard, who's kind of that sixth offensive lineman who can play all three positions on the offensive line. You see him there, number 66, is now warming up to go in at center. And he's been around. He's a, he's a redshirt senior. He was actually out last year with a knee injury. And nice to have a guy like David Accardo that was going to be their sixth lineman at any position. If the tackle goes down, the guard goes down, in this case the center, he's going to respond. So at least nice to have that veteran guy coming in in a crucial situation. And he has played tonight. He was in in the first half. He has played some left guard. So he and Ben Harris have kind of shifted back and forth on the left side of the offensive line for Louisiana Tech. So it's, it's not as if they're bringing him off the bench cold. And just to go back to your point there on college football, it's amazing how... College football Saturday never lets you down. It doesn't matter <laughs> what's going on with other sports, baseball, NBA basketball. There's just something about Saturdays and college football. And, and you, you, know, you even feel that in a small town like Ruston, Louisiana tonight. That sense of this thing's getting going. The truck is starting, and here we go. Well, oftentimes on college football Saturdays, the best places to be are the smallest towns. Because it means more. It just means more to the folks here than it does... In the big city. As Lon Roberts comes to the sideline, Ricardo goes in at center. Second down and long. 
And already a fumble exchange and a false start. I think he tried to snap there. The Mississippi State defender got into the neutral zone. I think maybe a veteran move there by Dave to, 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 to sense that and feel that and try to draw this penalty. Before the snap, offsides, contact by number 98, defense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. And that could prove to be very critical now in short yardage situation. You go from second and nine to very manageable second and four. Except Patrick Jackson is coming off to the bench as it looked like he was shaken up trying to cover up the fumbled snap. That's an easy one there, the helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. Sometimes those guys got to try to guess in their peripheral vision whether or not the guy crossed the line of scrimmage. When you take that little tap on the top of your head, a veteran move there to snap it and draw that penalty. I think Patrick Jackson got hurt by Taylor Bennett. The quarterback went back into the tailback as they were both going for the loose football. So now it's Daniel Porter in a tailback. He gets the handoff and has a first down. Wow. And once again, you've seen it tonight when they've had success running between the tackles. There you see Jamar Chaney going down. And again, he's clutching for the lower leg. But boy, when they've had success running behind the tackles, you remember the touchdown run earlier. Where has it been? It's behind the... for an SEC game.